Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mashed Potatoes and Cheese Dip podcast. This is the cheese dip. Yeah, he's, Gravy's dead. He's apparently the cheese dip. Yeah. So, before, before we go off on any weird tangents, because, I mean, that's going to happen oh, eventually. Oh, it's absolutely going to happen. We're going to be talking yeah. about Nazis, psycho murder cannibals, suicide. It's going to be a crazy podcast. Yeah, probably, but... Uh, what? what? <laughs> <We're>, well, <laughs> my favorite movies involve all three of those oh. things. Well, I meant after the movies. Oh, never mind. I imagine, yeah. honestly, going through this stuff is going to take the more majority. It probably but in will. Any case. But yeah, the, the... <coughs> well, get all, yeah, let's get all the crazy shit out of the way first. Then, if the majority of the podcast is going to be the movies and games, no, the crazy shit comes later. Okay, that, that's fine, how it always fine, works. Fine. Yeah. Anyway, the reason we're doing we're doing a slightly different thing today is because I wanted to make this a little bit more of a standalone podcast because um, I'm going to be like a busy motherfucker for the next like months. So, I mean, there's still probably going to be a podcast. I just don't know when it's going to be. Mm. And there's the very slight chance that this might be the final podcast of the year. Oh, okay. that's not too horrible. Yeah, yeah no, I, the podcast is not going away, but... It's, I, it's near the end of November. And plus, you probably have a few you haven't uploaded yet. Eh? A lot yeah. I haven't uploaded yet. So, but but I'm going to... For us, it's going to be a sad time. For you guys, you're not even going to notice. Yeah, but this one will probably be like rendered out and uploaded when I get home just for there to be something on the channel. Should we turn the fan on? Should we? You can. I'd just keep it on a kind of low setting. Yeah, of course. Uh, otherwise, it's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know when the next podcast is going to be, which is why I'm going to kick this one up as soon as I can. ASAP. Anyway, the different-ish thing we're doing today, because it's <coughs> getting toward the end of the year and we're, we're taking a look back on many many things we've compiled a list of five movies and five games for each of us that we think people need to experience oh wait shit i thought we were picking my top five favorite of all time. well that's also but that's fine. that's like kind it, of it changes my answer a little bit shit it, i'll, I'll well, go last <laughs> well the way, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna round table it we're gonna start at the bottom with five i'll do my five pick then you'll do your five, then Jimmy does his five, and then up to four, three, two, and all the way up to the top. Mm. I know you said you didn't rank these at all, no, so it doesn't matter kinda, too much to you. I think they're all... Yeah. It's it's a good thing we all took slightly different approaches to this, because I approached it from the angle of... I'm A gay man. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. From no. behind. Yeah. I approached, I approached it, it from behind. The way I approached it was I pretended that I was introducing movies and video I games. I think Andy would be more approached from the back. I, it's very true. <laughs> I have a fine ass. <laughs> but no, when I was when I was compiling my list, I was assuming that I was talking to a person who had never seen a movie or played a video game before, and these were going to be my picks to introduce that person to those worlds. I'm going to traumatize this person, unfortunately. That's okay. Maybe they'll have to watch your movies. I'm going to cannibalize them. <laughs> Neat. Yeah. This, they don't exist, so it's fine. Yeah. And also, because five really isn't enough, I'm, I'm throwing a monkey wrench into this, boys. Oh, boy. Before we get to our number one picks, we're going to... Runners up. We're, yeah. Well, no. We're going to... We, we could mention a couple honorable mentions. and. Exactly. We're, we're going to do a watch mojo. Yeah. Fuck. And those ones are going to be, like, super, super I mean, short, that, probably. That, yeah, Maybe. that's just an easy thing to throw in there real quick. Yeah. Like, I can think of a billion off the top of my head that yeah. I didn't say, but... So who wants to start with the movies? Um, I'll go ahead and start All with right. mine for the movies. I, I did mine a little differently, because I kind of did if... Some of them, at least, if it was a, a trilogy or something like that. Actually, most of them, if it was a trilogy or there was a couple of movies or yeah. something like that. I kind of included them if i thought it should be because yeah because i didn't do that which spoiler alert there is no star wars on my movie list yeah i, you... I cheated on one of mine and it is involving star wars i that, pretty much I, I cheated on a good amount of stuff but uh so i guess i'll i'll start on yeah, give us your uh, number five i did um I'll start with one that isn't any of those things. Uh, Trick or Treat. Mm. Oh, which is, my boy, right here. Which is uh, a little bit of cheating, I guess, because yeah. it's based on a graphic novel well, and everything. Yeah. But, I mean, still. Uh, excellent, excellent horror movie. Excellent horror, like, anthology yeah. stories it coming together. It will get together. you in the mood for Halloween in July. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
the whole story, it follows like the night of Halloween in a town. Uh, there's a little pumpkin boy. What's it? What do they actually call him? I don't. Uh, Sam. Hain? Sam. They just Sam. call him Sam. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be Sam Hain though. I well, know, but I think he's called like little little Sammy or Sam in the credits or something like that. Yeah. But uh, it's a different anthology, following different characters as they go through their night of Halloween. And, uh, it just, all takes place in the same area. Yeah, right? all yeah. in the same town. Just a bunch of different stories like, you, in one place. You constantly, during other people's stories, will see uh, the other characters kind of in the background during different parts of their stories, or maybe even stuff you don't necessarily see completely. It's never anything too wild, but yeah. uh, that you don't see Very at organic. least at some point see later. So yeah. I think there's like five different uh, ones. So there's... There's the principal's whole thing, although his story is kind of ongoing the entire time. Yeah. He's does the one who several... does at the end, right? Yes. I've, I only saw Trick or Treat once. I and... guess we could Ooh. say technically he's you, the... You should borrow it from me and watch it again. All right. It's so good. It's so fucking good. He's, he's pretty main character-ish, I guess, in, in a way. Technically. Central to the fiction. Yeah, basically. He's not the good He's not the good guy here. He's the protagonist. He's the focus, kind of. But... Yeah. Um... But it follows that, and little Sam Haim, he was a little uh, boy. sack boy, maybe they yeah. kind of call. <laughs> Except that's the PlayStation whatever, that little big planet. Don't they call that guy yeah. sack boy? Yep. Um, he was playable in PlayStation All-Stars. But uh, he's always there, and he's kind of some sort of spirit of Halloween. Like you find out later when you... He's basically unkillable. Yeah. He, he fights this crazy old man at the end to... Man, you you really have to go through to explain everything in that movie. You you just have to sit and talk out the whole plot of it. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those things where you can't be like this, this, and this, and you get the idea of the story. You have to be like these thirty three things all together, or, yeah. or else it will not make sense. This thing from this part of the story, from this other characters, and this just all sorts of stuff. But uh, plenty of spooky stuff. Uh, Spooks. My uh, favorite one. These this group of kids try to play this trick on their other friend about these uh, this bus of mentally handicapped kids yeah. that had been dropped into a lake because their parents wanted to get rid of them because they were handicapped un unsavory for the fa embarrassments to the it was family the 50s. they hated retarded children yeah. bus driver they paid the bus driver to do it bus driver sank with it it's it's like a myth type thing but it's local legend obviously a thing that's ap actually happened so the bully kids trick the girl into thinking that the kids are coming out of the 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 retarded kids are coming out of the uh out of the lake they go down there and uh then the retarded kids actually end up coming out of the lake and the kid who was bullied ends up leaving them all to get brutally massacred. Which yeah, nice. It doesn't show, but judging by the sounds made, the rips and the screams and everything, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. sounded pretty fucking brutal. And they're implying that she survived because she follows the traditions of Halloween. She's like, yeah, this jack o is going to keep people's spirits away. Yeah, kind of does. She, uh, yeah, at the end when she's walking away, she sees Sam and she's got a pumpkin with her and Sam just kind of nods to her. They nod to each other and kind of go their separate ways. Nice. Yeah, little Sammy won't kill you as Sammy. long as you give him candy if he knocks on your door. If you're like, you're, if you're a good like a good sport in Halloween, he'll, yeah, he'll, yeah. he won't even look at you really. It's when you're like, I don't have any candy, even he kills you with candy. Oh, you just, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, great movie. Every, definitely one, I think, if you like horror films and uh, especially like fun ones. Like, it's not necessarily like a scary movie. Yeah. But it's it's a just a great uh, spooky Halloween movie. Yes. So uh, that's that's my my whatever. I, Your number five. I mean, like I said, I have not ranked these. But yeah. That well, I guess we can call it that or whatever. Yeah. You want the next one? You want the last? All right. So my number five pick for the movie category was Fury, which um, this one I actually haven't seen that. Excellent movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of it and I've seen of it. I just haven't actually sat down and watched As I was sitting there, I, I deliberately put this one on the bottom of the list because I think it's the hardest one to talk about. It uh, it stars Brad Pitt. Yeah. Uh, like, I'll, I'm I'll, guessing it's everything that happened before in Glorious Bastards to Brad Pitt, except minus... Except minus Brad Pitt dying. Yeah. <laughs> Instead so, yeah. of him getting exploded, he gets his throat cut, and then he somehow lives, and yeah. then Inglorious Bastards he happens. a Nazi hunter. Yeah. yeah. So, like, real quick rundown of the plot. It's about a tank crew who 
pilots the uh, the M1 Sherman tank that is designated Fury. And they get a new guy at the beginning of the movie because their uh, support gunner got his head fucking exploded. Yeah, real bad. Yeah, real bad. They show so, him cleaning it up at the beginning. There's yeah. just like a flap of his face just sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> so the new guy they get, Norman, is like he was, he's Lewis? army, but he was um he was literally a desk clerk. Yeah. So he like shows up and they're like, Hey, here's your replacement and they're like, You know anything about tanking? And he's like no, I ran yeah. a typewriter. Immediately, they're all kind of like, no, this isn't. This is bullshit. Like, yeah, <laughs> although we do get one of my... We're absolute, all going to die because of him? <laughs> yeah, we get one of my absolute favorite pieces of dialogue in any movie ever. Like, um, Michael Pena's character, Gordo, just straight up steals Norman's backpack and starts going through it. Norman's like, what are you looking for? He's like, where's the cigarettes? And then Norman's like, I don't smoke. And then he, Michael Pena just looks him dead in the eyes and says... You're a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about the journey of this tank crew going through um, Nazi-infested France, and it's very blasting their way. It's got Shane from The Walking Dead. Yeah, in it. yeah. The the cast the, the, the cast is amazing. Yeah, the cast is uh, Brad Pitt, Logan Lerman, John Barenthal, Shia LaBeouf, and Michael Pena. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf, dude, yeah, dude and he's one. he's like my favorite character in that movie too. Is, is Michael this, Pena's up there. Is this but, pre or post crazy Shia LaBeouf? I'd this say, is post, this is, I think. I, this I, is I, after he did. Uh, it was. It's a. Isn't it? Fury came out 2014, so it might be like, like mid, right in the middle of it, like crazy. mid to late crazy, yeah. like the. In a, like, oh, he did amazing in that yeah, movie. Yeah, he, he did awesome. a really good job, but like nobody wanted to be around around him on set because he was trying to make the uh, the role tr very true to life. So he like didn't shower. Mm. Oh, gross! And like the movie got really true to life. Like uh, the whole cast got like a closed door interview session with like an actual tank crew from World War Two, and they like told him like all the stuff well, they did. Yeah, the the whole movie they they. They say based on a true story, and that's not the truth. Like, if, no. if you look into it... It's based on it's, stories it's from not, an actual tank It's crew. not the truth. It's stories from several different tank crews. Yeah. That this one tank crew ended up going yeah. through all of them in the movie. Yeah. But it was actually, like, five or six different stories. And yeah. uh, the, so, the that's, that's... interviews with actual veterans and stuff who were on tank crews, they were like, yeah, this movie fucking nails it, and... Like yeah, that's, that's they're basing it around actual stories. That's why it's, it's really hard to talk about without almost sounding pro-Nazi. Like I'll I'll just boil down this to people do some fucked up shit in war. Yeah. Everyone does fucked up shit. Yeah. In war. yeah, some just do it a little bit harder than others. Right? Yeah, so fucked up shit happens in war, and like also the other real big point of the movie, which I'm gonna try to phrase this right. Okay, so people fighting on the American side were people. People fighting on the Nazi side were also people. I mean, there's a difference between a German soldier and an SS soldier. Yeah, no. and well, also the they people point who... that out during the movie yeah. too. And German soldiers, they don't mind too much, but people yeah. with SS, they're like, "Give me that motherfucker!" Yeah, we're taking his scalp. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna like they straight up like gun a guy down in the street because he was an SS officer. Yeah, just immediately. And also, the people caught in the middle are also people, and uh, fucking poor ass civilians. Yeah, but um. Uh, I think my favorite character in the end actually ended up being John Barenthal's character. He definitely has a re bit of a redemption arc. Type yeah, thing. he's like, kind of a dick. He's yeah, an he's a real asshole. Like, yeah. um, he plays like, a good yeah. asshole. Like the uh, stuff. they call him Coon Ass because he's very southern and he's basically just shitting on Norman like the entire time. And, like, there's a scene where Norman gets laid with a French girl, and then as they're leaving, that French girl's house gets exploded by artillery fire. Oh, fuck. And he sees her laying in the rubble, and he's like, he's like, I gotta get her out, I gotta get her out! And John Barenthal just comes up and, like, grabs him by the back of his coat, and he's like, get the fuck in the tank, Norman! What are you doing? This is war! This is what we do! Get in the fucking tank! And that sounds like John Barenthal. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's very John Barenthal. <laughs> and then, like, at, at the very, very end, like, their tank gets hit by a landmine. They go into, like, a barn to make sure there's no Nazis hiding out in there. And uh, John Barenthal just pulls Norman aside. And he's like, look, Norman, I understand we ain't good people, but but I think you is. Yeah. And it's like, oh, and then they go back to the tank and they start passing around a bottle of booze. Basically, like, look, we're trapped in Nazi territory. We're, we know we're all going to die. They're kind of waiting. They're, they're setting a trap in yeah. where they're going to take out as many Nazis as possible so that some of their people can get away. 
and stuff. And they basically, it's a suicide mission yeah. type deal. Well, they can't even move the tank or anything. Yeah, the they tank could, still works. It's, they could it's drive. Just 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 they could yeah. probably run and hide, but they were Choose ordered. Not to. Well, because they were ordered to, like, defend, like, yeah. a retreat or something of their people. And they were like, well, we can't do that anymore because the tank's messed up. And then they're like, well. Maybe we yeah, can, we're gonna, we're gonna dis- <laughs> we're, di- we're gonna disguise the tank as a broken down tank. Wait for the Nazis to come as close as possible, and you just like light their asses up. Yeah, no, and that's they're a like very good ending. Yeah, they're passing around a bottle before the Nazis get here, and Norman takes and just takes a huge swig off of it, and then John Barthol's just like, "Damn, you a fighting, drinking, and fucking machine, ain't you?" <laughs> and everyone in the group has nicknames at this point, except Norman. Uh, Brad Pitt was War Daddy. Shia LaBeouf. War Whoa, whoa yeah. do not gloss over that. <laughs> that it, it's never explained why that's his name. He's also, just in charge of the tank. Back then, Daddy didn't mean the same thing it does. Yeah. Oh, no, I know, but yeah. still. So Brad Pitt was War Daddy. Uh, John Barenthal was Coon Ass. Shia LaBeouf was Bible. And Michael Pena was Gordo. So then John Barenthal gives lines like, You a fighting, drinking, and fucking machine engine. And they're like, Hey, that's it. That's his war name, Machine! And then they just kill a whole shitload of Nazis, but everyone but Norman dies. He ends up... He ends up hiding under the tank, and then, like, one of the very last shots of the movie... Like, he abandons them, or do they send him out of the tank? Like, um, Gordo dies first, I think. It's either Gordo or Kunax died first. Yeah, Barenthal dies first. Barenthal dies first, then, uh... I think Shia LaBeouf gets shot next. Uh, yeah, Shia LaBeouf gets... And then it's... Yeah, because he's up, like, on the turret or something, and he's... Taken yeah, out by the sniper, <laughs> and then uh, they drop. They, the Nazis get on top of the tank and drop a grenade in, and Gordo just fucking no, dies. No, I think Gordo tried to throw it out and fucked up. No, he he tr- he tried to grab it, realized he couldn't, and he just pulled it in and like huddled yeah. himself over it and okay. got blowed up. I thought he had tried to throw it out though. Yeah, like bounced off the rim back down at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, he, I thought it was something like that. But like I, he was I scrabbling for it. It's but been he, a while. He realized he, it took longer than like two seconds. And it's going to go off anyway. Right? Yeah, he got wounded, which is why he couldn't stand up, and he was just oh, like, Fuck see, I think you. he went up to throw it and he got shot. Yeah. And so when he went down, it fell in his lap, and, and then, then he did it. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Yeah. So and then uh. Brad Pitt gets shot by the sniper and then realizes that they're gonna lose, so he sends Norman out the bottom hatch of the tank to hide under it, and then they just drop, like, five fucking grenades on Brad Pitt. Yeah. (laughs) And he looks... Which, strangely enough, so he hides underneath the tank. Doesn't somebody see him and just walk away? Yeah, one of the Nazi, like, foot soldier guys, like, they're like, hey, check under the tank. This one guy, like, leans down to see Norman's down there and he's like unarmed he's like a fuck. terrified is he a young looking kid is he like only 18 or something like yeah, that he, like, he looks seen, super young have you seen gamer i think it was gamer oh, oh, God, it's not too, yeah, it's not super relevant movie. keep going with the yeah. german he, he looked on. very young he was he played charlie in the chocolate factory in the johnny depp one. Oh, he, he was charlie oh so, yeah. oh, oh okay yeah, yeah so, so he looks like a baby yeah yeah he was super young he's just like fuck please don't kill me and like the nazi guy just stares at him for a minute and just like turns and just leaves him just yeah. walks away and he's like yeah there's nothing under there which yeah so oddly enough when he goes back up into the tank and he like looks and Mad brad, brad pitt is just <laughs> still there with just like the side of his face lightly burnt and yeah. it's like that was like five, five grenades, grenades. <laughs> you were fucking like you were mulch right? yeah and then eventually the i mean allies, i get why they did it yeah. yeah and then the allies eventually show up and get norman and you know take him off somewhere yeah but Regardless, very good World War Two yeah, movie. Excellent. Probably my favorite World War Two movie. Yeah, like a lot of a lot of movies. Not quite my favorite. Like a lot of World War Two movies. Seen. Like, well, I know, but so far. Yeah, like a lot of World War Two movies tend to like idealize war, like especially like the earlier ones and some later oh, ones. Especially the earlier ones when we were still like high off our fucking victory. Bam. Yeah, but this one is like, nah, dude. War is terrible. It's gross. Fucked up shit happens. Basically, after we discovered yeah. and categorized PTSD, we we're like, "Fuck, yeah. war sucks." <laughs> yeah, so that that's my pick for number five is Fury. All right, well, uh, since I haven't seen, I can't say this is a better World War II movie, but this is my favorite World War II movie, and it's Schindler's List. Mm. Probably, I, I, okay, look, if you've never seen it, you probably won't enjoy your first viewing. No. But it's a movie every single person I think should watch at least once in their life. I yeah. haven't seen it. It's oh, dude, you have to just one time. It's a very I, long fucking movie. I hear movie. it's very depressing. It is. <laughs> it's it a, is, <laughs> but it's also it ends on a very high note. Yeah, it's and also so Liam Neeson's. Yeah, Liam Neeson's performance. I understand now why he's still super fucking famous. Yeah, because he was doing shit like this in the '90s, and then later on he's kept doing stuff like this movie. We just is watched so good. The other night. Yeah. It is. Uh, it, it shows in a very organic, natural way how a member of the Nazi Party becomes a Jew sympathizer. Yeah. 
and it is uh, it's so good. It Liam all... Neeson basically he either does run or ends up running a concentration camp, right? He he run he ends up running the like the machining like area of the uh, concentration camp, which he uses as an excuse to keep as many people alive at a certain point in the movie after he like starts you know sympathizing with them. Yeah. Like a uh, certain point in the movie, which by the way, I wish I saw. Uh, uh, Schindler's List before I watched any of the Harry Potter movies because oh, Ralph yeah. Fiennes, Voldemort, yeah. is Goeth. Goeth? I think it's Goeth or Goeth. It's either movie. Goeth or Girth, depending on the dialect. I like Girth. Yeah, Girth. We're or, calling Girth. No, it's Goethe is how it's pronounced in certain dialects. Anyway, so, well, we could call him he, he plays Gerthy. a historical character who is uh, is usually referred to as worse than Hitler when it comes to like his like violence and horribleness. Yeah, he was right up there with, like, Kimmler and shit. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, there's a certain Even point in the movie when, like, they're trying to take more people, and he's like, no, like, these are all people very valuable to the war effort, and they're like, what about these fucking children? What do you need these children for? And he's like, well, their fingers are the only ones small enough to fit inside the polished cases. Yeah. And they're like, fuck, fine. What about bullets. that dude? He's only got one arm. Well, he's also the only one who knows how to operate that machine. Fuck, fine. Yeah, and, like, all, the, all that kind of stuff, like, to cover for people, or even... Yeah. There's Early. a very good line where I think when, like, the, the SS are leaving and, like, one of the Jewish guys walks up to Liam Neeson and he's like, hey, like, are you sure you should be, like, telling him all of that? Like, we, we can't keep up with that kind of production. And Liam Neeson just turns and says, I will be very disappointed if even one usable bullet comes out of that factory. Yeah, yeah, that's a very, it's a very good little line. Yeah. And there's even, uh, even before he full-on turns, like, sympathize, so there's a moment where there's, like, a bunch of, uh, uh, a bunch of Jewish people on the trains and he somehow convinces them to start spraying water all inside the carriages because they're all fucking, like, dehydrating to death and it's hot as shit in there. And, yeah. like, just a little... It starts off like that where he's like, no, fucking pour some water on something. God, you guys are horrible. And everyone's like, yeah, I guess we're gonna fucking spray the animals with water. <laughs> that kind of shit. Like, that kind of, like, attitude towards it. Yeah, it's a... It's a very tough movie to watch, but it's it absolutely it worth is. it. And it's uh, it's all in black and white, which like, not all. I don't. Like, I let hang on. Let me let me tell this little story. So the first encounter I had with this movie was when I was like, I don't I don't remember how young I was, but I was supposed to be asleep, and my dad was out in the living room with my mom watching it, and I snuck out into the hallway, and it was under like a little table we had there. And I was watching this movie, and I did not know what the fuck was going on. I was too young. It's but, also a three-hour movie. You yeah. have to watch it from the very beginning, or you'd be very confused. Yeah, but there's a scene where someone, like, strikes a match or is, like, passing around a lighter or something, and, like, the lighter was the only... Or the flame of the lighter was the only thing that was in color in that shot. Oh, there, there are certain things, certain items that are in color during yeah. the movie, which is the point. Like, it's yeah. all black and white, and then there's certain significant or at least artistically cool-looking color. Like, the there's a little girl who has a red coat. Yeah. And that red coat's gonna crush most of you. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, it starts off with uh, I forgot how exactly he has the Jewish guy running his like uh, his finances, like basically his uh, tax guy, and that's where it <coughs> all starts. And he starts like using him to like make lists of people he can save. He ends up starting to sell every single thing he owns just yeah. to make money to smuggle people out of uh, Nazi Germany and shit. Yep. And. Uh, the, I, I have only cried at less than five movies, and Schindler's List was one of them. Yeah. Towards the end. Like, the, the scene where he, like, pulls out his gold-plated oh, pen, and he's like, this would have been at least worth two more Well, because I purposely avoid movies that I think would make me cry, okay? It's yeah. not because I'm a tough guy. It's because I know I'm going to be oh, a bitch. tough guy. It's okay. I still get weepy at the end of Independence Day. I don't. That's, yeah. It's, it's too awesome. Up. Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, it's, it's awesome, but it's also heartbreaking. Yeah. You tell my children I love them very much. It's, but yeah, his whole breakdown where he's like, this pin could have saved two more people. Like, that car <laughs> could have gotten ten or some shit like that. Yeah. And literally all the people he saved is like, dude, chill. You've got like a thousand of us. Holy shit. Yeah, and they all like give him a group hug and shit. Yeah, and like they, they take out this and dude. And he dies trampled by the people he <laughs> saved. Right. <laughs> and they, they pull out this like dude's gold teeth to melt it down and make a ring. Like, and that good dude with gold teeth's like, yeah, fucking do it. This is, like, he's gonna, ah. And they give him a ring that they made out of this guy's teeth. It's kind of weird, but. Yeah. Like, but... it's a very, very, like, nice gesture. No. Yeah. I would be freaked out by it. I'd be like, okay, these people scare me now. <laughs> like, I'll keep yeah. saving them, but keep them the fuck over there. And, like, his little speech when, like, uh, he knows that, like, they're gonna have to leave and, like, He's explained to them that, like, he is still a member of the Nazi party and how, like, he may end up getting executed anyway, no matter what he did. Yeah. And, like, all this other stuff. Like, it's just such a great movie. And it's, uh, especially when everything starts falling sh Oh, real quick. Like, the weird false character arc of Goth, where it kind of tries to humanize him and then it just fucking stops that shit. 
and yeah. like, yeah, we're not humanizing this guy. This guy was and is a piece of shit. Didn't a lot of the like older Jewish actors like not want to be near that guy? Oh because yeah, because Ralph like Fiennes very, looks a lot like him. Like the yeah. old, like the actual survivors like would start freaking out. Like they like they would freak out thinking that he was actually there. No. Yeah. So <laughs> and he yeah. hasn't aged a day. <laughs> This man is immortal. He's been bathing in Jew blood. Yeah, well, they're also like 80-something. You know, you know. Hey, man. The Nazis were researching some weird shit. It was possible. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. All right. Yeah, no, it's a very... it's a very. Like I said, you're not going to like it, but it is a very important piece but of cinema. But you should right see now. it. Yeah. So, Noodle, number four. Go. Number four... Uh, okay. Well, this is a, a, one of the, a double one. The rest of them... Well, no, one of them I'm going to... It's... Uh... uh so this is a uh, one with two movies, but uh, both of the same name: Dawn of the Dead, mm. uh, the original, and the remake. Yeah, George A. Romero films. Um, the first movie is just groundbreaking for what it did, and the uh, the, the, the talking the points it it brought up and everything. The the Oh, God, I'm not thinking of the right words. Civil rights, basically. Consumerism and shit. Consumer, yeah. Wait, are we talking... Wait, did it's you say convers- Night of the Living Dead? No, like, Dawn no. Oh, okay. The mall one. The, night of the, the one that took okay. place in the mall. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, very important. Keep going, sorry. Um, it's a great movie. It, it's the one you think of when you think George Romero. Yeah. Uh, it's the, the people in the mall with the zombies, and, oh, look, the zombies all came back to the place. Consumerism, bad, bad. Uh... Which, you know, had a bit more impact at the time. Now it's a bit played out, but yeah. still. Yeah, we have the internet now. We've read and heard it like a million times. But Back still, to- uh, got great characters, Flyboy and Black Man. Uh, Black forget Man. his name. <laughs> uh, but they are really good characters. They don't trust each other at first. They, they kind of kind of uh, hey, uh, really dislike uh, each other. <laughs> um, and then over the course of the movie, they come to trust each other and start to really like each other. It's the scene after they work together to lure the zombies out of the mall and they're all just, you know, enjoying the mall, the mall and having a blast. Like and, the uh, ice skating scene was so adorable. Like, they're just actually having fun for once. Yeah. yeah. And then it gets wrapped up when the bikers come and the zombies get back in and all that. Um, just a really great movie. I can still go back and watch it anytime and thoroughly enjoy myself. I mean, it's got the older... Uh, practical effects, which I always love in movies. Yep. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, some of the stuff looks a bit goofy because, of course, it does. But yeah, I love it. Um, Part of the charm, dude. Not a whole lot else to to say on the original, but the remake, uh, two thousand four, they remade it, mm-hmm. and man, that movie gave me nightmares. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. That chainsaw this, scene where they slip with the chainsaw. Oh. This, oh. Uh, yeah. This was the. Uh, the movie, I think the first time I ever watched it was at your house. Probably. And I then had to walk home in the pitch black afterwards. Oh, you poor, and poor boy. It was just like, oh, there's zombies coming out of the woods now. That's what's happening. Yeah. I remember I sprinted across your yard, but it was winter, so the snow was like five feet deep. And it was just like, nope, I'm just fucking running. <laughs> like, yep. Running through the middle instead of taking the road up and around because that's longer and I'd have to walk immediately right by the woods. Yeah. Uh, we also had a lot this, more trees in my yard back then. This was the one uh, that like started introducing fast zombies. This and uh, 28 Days Later, but yeah. they came out, I think, pretty much the same time. Very close, uh, yeah. I think 28 Days Later is like 2006, and the remake no. of that was 2005, or is it 2004? It was 2004 with Dawn of the Dead. and It was at least within a year of each other, I think. They, they were right there. They were making it at the same time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it started introducing the concept of like fast zombie, like just mindless sprinting maniac zombies. The kind of zombies that make uh, everyone go, yeah, I'm killing myself if these are real. Yep. <laughs> but starring Ving Rames and the dad from Modern Family. Yep. They, uh, <laughs> they and, and other people. Yeah, my, uh, I think you my. You and your gun shop. Yep, Andy. I think my favorite scene out of that one was the one where. The, uh, the moving truck or whatever was coming in that had, like, a bunch of people in it. Mm. And um, the uh, the guy who worked at Best Buy and the uh, the dude who I think was played by a rapper? 
Oh, you're uh, Mackay Pfeiffer. Yeah. Okay. So maybe not a rapper, but yeah, they he, he played a rapper-ish character. Yeah, he's he's been he was a big black actor for a while. Yeah. So they're like like uh, Best Buy TV guys. Like, all right, we're gonna go out there and save him. He's like, no, man, no, I'm not ready. Are you ready? One, two, three. And the guy tries to open the door and it doesn't open. And then Mackay Pfeiffer just reaches over. He's like, come on, man. Unlocks the dead bolt. Um, bolts it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Don't mention it. Yeah. The. Uh... There's a whole lot of uh, good character development in that one too, yeah. with the uh, like security guys from the mall who are just that complete classic tassel complete actor. assholes yep. at first, and then just come around and end up being well. At least the one of them ends up being a huge uh, member of the group. Wait, I mean, isn't the asshole character the one that becomes them. a? Yeah, and hey, I mean the other one does is too pretty much the whole time, but the the he asshole dies. one ends up being uh, very useful yeah a lot more useful and goes out like a, yeah also goes out like a badass yeah and also uh, we can't forget the classic hey take a look at ben cozine he's a twitcher <laughs> tv says you gotta shoot him in the head yep well you can't believe everything you hear on tv yeah but that that scene where he gets the uh, the fucking the the flare like the guy's getting eaten in the bus, and he pulls out the flare, and he's like, fucking figures, and he shoots the flare to light it, and the same bullet also, like, breaks open a propane tank, yeah, and just fucking explodes the bus. There's a propane tank in there, and yeah, it just takes out a shitload of zombies with them. This is where they, right after they'd been armoring up the, the shuttles, bus. the yeah. bus shuttles at the mall so they could take it out and I feel like that get to the dock to get out on I the I feel boat like that and... bus is what spawned Land of the Dead with that fucking like armored up garbage truck with like yeah. turrets on it and shit. The, What's the, it called? The uh, Dead Reckoning. Yeah, Dead Reckoning. <laughs> Land of the Dead, also great movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those those two movies, two of my favorites of all time. Yep. Um, oh yeah, Andy. Oh, we can't not mention the zombie baby scene which is probably the most oh, traumatizing yeah. scene there's in the movie we gotta go over that real, real quick there's, up there's scene. zombie baby scene uh there's a giant fat woman in the wheelbarrow well, that was just who, kind of hilarious who was dies. played by a man yep was played by a biker looking man actually, also but. weird factoid about that movie the uh, the music was done well like not the soundtrack but like the music overall was done by a guy named tyler bates who also gifted us with uh, "You can't stop this motherfucker." <laughs> holy shit balls! Holy shit balls! Yeah, same guy. The juggernaut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Zombie baby scene. Girls infected while she's pregnant. Gives yeah. Birth to a zombie baby. It, it, isn't there like in the end credits like a live head in a cooler? Uh yeah. Well, I mean, live. I guess where that was a callback to an earlier zombie. Few of them are was, escaping yeah. on the boat and uh, they spot a cooler in the water and when yeah. they open it it's just like guts but the head is still partly there yeah. and it's just Oh, and we also can't forget to mention um, you fucker get up, come on, get down with What's that guy's it? name? Richard Cheese. Yeah, Richard Cheese. <laughs> Bobby, will you give it to me? Two, three, four. <laughs> Jesus. God bless that guy. Yeah. That that whole movie is just great. It's really good. So uh, yeah, two two good movies there. I'm counting it as one. Yeah, fair enough. My next then. Yep. Yeah. All of right. Course. So my number four pick was a movie called Never Back Down. I, I starring made... guy who was famous for a little bit as the bad guy. I am not familiar with famous? this movie, and I might he, be. What's though. he been in recently? Uh, the... Was he in Pacific Rim? I don't think he was in Pacific Rim. I know he was in Pandorum. Yeah, he was in Pandorum. Yeah. So I picked Never Back Down because I also was attempting to cover many genres, and my favorite genre, hands down, is the fight movie genre. Wait, fight or martial arts? There's a difference. Like you say, martial arts. It's kind movie. of MMA. It's kind of an MMA movie. Well, a I little, think a little bit. Like yeah, it is. Like when people say martial arts movie, I think things like Tony Jaw films and Jackie Chan films and you know stuff like that. K- karate Rob Van Damme movies. <laughs> Yeah, and and those. You know, martial arts movie are where... If you want to watch an extremely obese man pretend to know karate. I said Rao Van Dam, not Steven Seagal. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I was thinking Steven Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm talking like who's like 60 and can still do... Jean-Claude Van Dam. Rob Van Dam is a pro wrestler. I I think I said Jean Van Dam or something like that. I mixed them up. Jean Van Rob. For martial arts movies, I think of, you know, any one skilled person beating crap out of a whole lot of other, like, 
skilled or not skilled people. Yeah, well, I mean, skilled compared to normal people. Young martial arts too. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Fight movies for me is movies where the combat is completely contained, like in a fighting ring, one on one kind of stuff. Oh, okay, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Similar, yeah, yeah. similar to like a Rocky. Yeah, or something. And like the only. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Like good. the only reason I didn't pick Rocky was because there's a lot of fucking Rocky movies, and I feel like to just pick one would kind of do the series a disservice. Well, depending on what, what point you are in the series, at yeah. certain points, like because mm-hmm. like <laughs> like all of them, <laughs> all of them. What's are... with this talking robot? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you guys forget about that? <laughs> that was that was Rocky Four, and the eighties were a weird time. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Ivan Drago, holy fuck! Yeah, you know Ivan Drago is amazing. Which... All right, you know, get us back to your movie before we go on too much of a tangent. Yeah, yeah. So Never Back Down is a fight movie that is. It doesn't have a whole lot of like the emotional depth of Rocky movies, which. To some people, it's kind like, of the focus, really, of Rocky. The yeah. fighting is the showcase, but the focus yeah. is Rocky. But it's, it's a very easy movie to watch with a very easy-to-understand plot. The main character's dad died in a drunk driving accident. Which his had, dad being drunk or someone else being drunk? His dad being drunk. Ooh, even rougher. Yeah, so his dad dies in an accident. Obviously, it has a bad effect on the kid who's in high school. He starts getting into, like, fights and shit. So they end up moving from uh, Iowa to, like, Florida? <laughs> Just to like rough change. Was it yeah. Florida or Cal- I mean they're it, interchangeable. It was, whatever. Yeah, it was Florida though. It was definitely Florida. So like they want. I think I've only seen this the movie swamp once. Dick of America. Yeah. <laughs> so they 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 go there because um, his younger brother gets of all things a tennis scholarship. Cool. Must be really good at tennis. Like he is. Yeah. Like he's super young, knows what he's doing. So they move down there to get a fresh start, and then uh, a video starts circulating around the school of this scene at the beginning where the main character is like straight up KOs a linebacker from an opposing football team in like one punch. Oh shit. Yeah. So they're like, oh my god, like this dude's a badass and this video starts circulating and he starts getting popular and then he finds out that there's like a very big underground fighting ring at in like this area he lives which weirdly enough, more common than you might think. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, so he like he gets invited to a party of the the guy you were talking about. His name's I can't pronounce his last name. His first name is Cam, though. Yeah, try, slap, to, try to pronounce the last slappy name. Slappy Wango. Gigandent? Gigandet? Oh, okay. Weird name, but like... Giga Dick. Like, this guy just has a face, and if you see this face, you instantly want to hate this guy. And the great thing about this actor is he knows he has this face, and he completely enjoys getting typecasted into, like, antagonist roles. Right. Yeah. So, he challenges him to a fight. Turns out the villain's, like, been in karate since he was, like, seven years old and is, like, the top fighter of, like, this underground fighting room. He just gets his ass whooped by this guy. Yeah. Think, thinks he's gonna kick his ass and all this stuff. And Excellent. the guy yeah. the guy just toys with him and taunts him and all this stuff. Yeah. I, I remember the, that much. Like, and then, like, he hits him, like, multiple times which what with what should be, like, knockouts. And the guy just keeps getting back up. And, like, you start to see the villain's, like, all right, maybe I shouldn't just toy with this guy, and then just just straight kicks him across the face and like puts him under for like a day. Yeah. Jesus. So he wakes up, and this friend that he'd met is like, "Dude, you're not gonna let that stand, are you? Like, come train with me at you know my master's dojo." And the master was played by um, Jaimin Hunsu. Yep, that's it. Yeah, we're going with that. <laughs> he's Jaimin Hunsu. He's the, he's the guy who played the bartender in the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie. Yeah, I'm not gonna remember that. Uh. He, he's a, I haven't seen that in quite a while. He, so. He's a pretty famous guy. You'll, you'd recognize him if you saw him. But, like, the rules for getting into this dojo is, like, you can't fight outside the dojo. That's, like, his rule, which ties into this character's backstory later. Eventually, the main character starts getting, like, really good, really badass, and gets caught fighting outside. He gets kicked out of the dojo. There's a whole redemption arc he has to go through, which... One of my favorite scenes that got cut from the movie is um, him and his friend trying to get him back into the dojo. So they're just, like sneakily following around this fucking martial arts master who I think was confirmed to, like, train with the Gracies or something like that at some point. Yeah. Which, by the way, super famous Brazilian jiu-jitsu family, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah. family, if you don't know. So they're, they're quietly following him down this, like, dark alley, and, like, one of them turns to the other and is like, should we really be trying to, like, sneak up on a mixed martial arts master in an alley in the dark? And they just kind of, like, look at each other very panicky for a minute, and then he, he just turns around. He knew they were following him. He's like, I'm just going to the store, boys. <laughs> and just keeps walking. So eventually this whole thing culminates with um, finding out that the drunk driving accident that killed the main character's dad, he was with his dad at the time, and he let his dad, who was drunk, drive because he just didn't want to say no to his dad. Yeah. And then you find out that um, the martial arts master, some bad shit happened to him in like the Caribbean or something where his brother, who was even better than him, 
got into a bar fight and then was shot outside that same bar by the guy whose ass he kicked later. Yeah. So, like, that that's where the heavy emotional shit is. And he ends up going yeah. to this tournament. Probably the rule about not fighting outside the dojo. Yeah, because well. he's like, look, man, if I would have just fought that guy, I would have put him down and made sure he stayed down and my brother would still be alive right now. So, whatever. Heavy shit. The whole thing culminates. Guy, the main character, goes to a tournament and has a really brutal street fight at the very end with his uh, his rival guy. And he was like, he went into this fight with like broken ribs or something like that. And the guy yeah, knew yeah. it and was just like punching him in those ribs over and over and over again. I, I remember the one scene specifically where the guy punches him in the heart and you, it like gives you like a little it, x-ray. X-ray and shows his heart like palpitate and that always just was like, oh, I don't like that one yeah. bit. <laughs> like, that's how you kill a man. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the the final fight happened because the rule of the tournament they went to was like no eye gouging and no groin shots, and the, the antagonist ended up gouging a guy's eyes because this guy just like turtled up on the ground where he like couldn't get a submission right. lock on him. So he just like grabbed him by the face and like dug his thumb into his eye, and they found out about it, so that guy was disqualified. So the main character was planning to keep going because he figured, you know, this other guy's just like going to go to the finals and I have to get there too, and then he finds out he didn't, and he just like fins down just like taps out before the mm-hmm. match even starts and just like walks out and they're like dude what are you doing like you, you could win this tournament he's like that's not why i'm here i'm here to kick this one guy's ass and end this whole fucking thing because the uh i forgot to mention it the main antagonist guy invited protagonist guy's friend to a party and then just beat the fuck out of him just to get under the, the protagonist's skin Oof. like it's a it's a very very good movie but yeah good good guy wins in the end gets the girl and the, the, girl, the girl was with the antagonist guy yeah, the, of course that the point Beats is him up and steals his girlfriend <laughs> yeah and then i guess they kind of become friends later because they're like at a at the yeah. pier or something and they like see each other across the parking lot and they just kind of like give a, a mutual nod of respect to each other it was very cool it's a great movie i think it's on hulu if you ever really want to watch it but i highly recommend it that, that that's my number four pick for movie list all right, uh, I've got something similar, but uh, the reason why we discuss the difference between fighting and martial arts movies is because my four is a martial arts movie, and it's It Man Two. Yeah. Not It Man One. Not It Man Three. I w- I was gonna like It One Three was fuck it. Was that the one with Mike Tyson? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah that, that one was, was very silly. <laughs> well, it, that was the it. only silly part of it, though. Really, the rest of the story is fairly serious. Yeah, I don't know. I remember watching it and just being like, this one's silly. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah, it's overall. Hitman 2. It's the one where, uh, at the end, he ends up fighting uh, Twister, the, the British Western boxer who, so far throughout the entire movie, has just whipped and killed everyone's ass. Or, well, killed his was enemy and now his friend character. And Yeah. That was, that was a good one. Oh yeah, Hitman 2 is really good. It basically, uh, it starts off from the ending of Hitman 1. It's a direct sequel. It's literally like, I think the very beginning of the movie is like two minutes after the end of the first movie when we're still driving away with injured Hitman. And uh, he opens his own dojo in, um, what was the name of the city? I'm not going to remember the name of the city, but it's a new it's a new place. And he opens a, no, a dojo and he has to like deal with all these other masters of the current jo- dojos to like have his dojo be official and he, like, he fights all the masters on this weird, uh, it's like a reinvention of, like, a long honor traditional type thing, but instead yeah. of uh, a stage surrounded by bamboo spikes that ends in death for the loser, it's just, like, upturned stools. <laughs> and, you know, like, they got past killing people, to you know, see yeah. you can run a dojo. But if you fall off, you're gonna get hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna suck. And, of course, you know, Itman, the main character, he whoops... Uh, the first two masters ass. He yeah, is, using his Wing Chun. He is one with the Force, and the Force is with yeah, him. Yeah, the third one is where they have the like differing Wing Chun style. Yeah, like the, there, yeah. there's like vanilla Wing Chun, which is the antagonist, and there's like you know Ip Man's Wing Chun, which is like you know progressive and adaptive. And but that's a different movie. And this one, uh, it's just really like I would have said Ip Man one because I like the flow of Ip Man one's story a little bit better. But the fact you see some characters come back who change kind of sides, you know, it's almost like a Dragon Ball Z situation where there's a Vegeta now and there's like some other characters, like a Piccolo type character, which is the one that gets killed by Twister. And uh, the British people in this movie, accurately, but my God, are they giant fucking dicks. <laughs> my God. You know, appropriate though they were. Yeah. And it's also a Hong Kong film, so they're going to portray them that way. Naturally. <laughs> and uh, so uh, Twister is like giant for you know china he's only, i think he's only like six one but he's portrayed as like seven feet tall compared to everyone else because you know 
kind of is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, ends up killing it man's friend who was his enemy, like a, a rival martial artist master. <laughs> and uh, he eventually uh, challenges Twister to a fight to, I think it's to not preserve the honor of Eastern martial arts, but to like just make peace, like just get the shit over with yeah. kind of thing. And uh, his his fight with Twister, like, the, the whole reason why I like It Man 2 more than It Man 1 is in It Man 1, he doesn't even get close to losing. I think It Man 1 gets hit twice, like, nice. in, in a real way in the first movie. Like, gets hit twice at the very last fight by, against the Japanese general. And that's it. The rest of it is him steamrolling everyone. In this fight, you watch the untouchable hero get beaten in the ground three times. Nice. Like, just fucking knocked around like a literal rag doll. Twister, like, gives him a left hook, and it lifts him off the ground across the fucking ring. Because he's 5'6 and, like, 140 pounds. Not yeah. even. <laughs> and then him having to, like, adapt his fighting style to aim for weak points to make his opponent weaker before he actually starts... Yeah, it's just so good. Like, And, like, the, the moral of the story is a really inspiring one. And it may not be very, uh, like, uh, relatable to, you know, modern American audiences, but it's a Hong Kong film, so... Yeah. It probably rings truer with, you know, people who are of Chinese descent and whatnot. Right. But I think it's probably one of my favorite uh, martial arts movies when it comes to the story, characters, and fighting overall. Uh, and I have a runner-up that's related to this later on. Okay. All right, Noodle, num we're on number three now. All right, here's one that we probably, you know, almost don't need to discuss all that much. And this is three movies. It's the Star Wars original trilogy. Yeah. Watched as one movie. Um, what? Watched as one movie, like a. Like I, a I mean, I mean, you really I guess. Yeah. But because I mean, we've done that before. It's only like five and a half hours to watch all three or something like that. Maybe a bit longer. If I you think get it's a super a bit extended longer, cut. But, but either way, um, I mean, there's there's what what can you say? I, it, I almost feel like you should lump Rogue One in there too because mm. it really ties into the story. It does, but but it's also time. not an original. But we've also trade. talked about Rogue One and how like while I very much like Rogue One and it's my favorite of the newer movies. Yeah. Uh it definitely like makes Leia into kind of a bitch. Like not a, not a bitch, but just like Hey, these people did everything. Everybody talks about how Leia stole the Death Star plans and all no, that no, stuff. No, 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 no. And then in Rogue One, it's like, yeah, she just kind of took it from the got him. Stole it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't like, like I which know, I don't like that part. She was, but at the same time, her. yeah, that's yeah what happened. I mean, weirdly but. enough, if you like, real quick segue, if you go and play uh, Star Wars Force Unleashed, the little bit of interaction you get with Leia also has her acting really kind of bitchy because I think she's like. 14 years old at the time that game takes place. Yeah. And, like, she, like, granted, like, naturally she's gonna be, act like a bitch to the Imperials because they're the Imperials, but she, like, she also acts a little bit bitchy to Starkiller, too. Like, I think that just might secretly... She's a 14-year-old well, girl, that's what they She's do. a 14-year-old yeah. girl, and he is Darth Vader's apprentice, and, like, I yeah. mean, it's not, not it's, much of a surprise for her to be kind of bitchy and untrustworthy, er, and not yeah, trust him that one. You know, let's just completely ignore the fact that he was also saving a fuck load of Wookiees at the same time, but that, whatever, that's not I important. mean, you could always rationalize it as, well, this fucking sir, uh, pupil of Darth Vader is rescuing these Wookiees for a very bad reason, probably. Yeah. Or just, it's not like the Empire wouldn't mind sacrificing some stormtroopers for some undercover type shit. Yeah. But, either way, Star Wars original trilogy, yeah. I mean, classic, amazing, practical effects, well, All since sorts, everyone knows so, the story, how uh, about we talk about some uh, more obscure, maybe behind the scenes, like interesting details that we know of, like little stuff like that, since everyone I mean, knows I, the story of Star I, Wars. I wonder... The, uh, the I know line was improvised. The what? I know. Um, uh, the oh, scene where oh, Han was yeah, getting yeah, put yeah. in carbonite, which, if I were to put a Star Wars movie on this list, it would have been Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, that would be the best one, but you can't yeah. really just watch it alone. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta you, have the first yeah, which is, again, or why I did But, yeah, like, the scene where Han was getting in Carbonite, they tried a whole bunch of different dialogue to, like, you know, like, the whole I love you scene. It's like, well, you know, like, Han wouldn't really say that right there. And, like, the whole back and forth thing. And then, finally, Harrison Ford just improvised the I love you. I know. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Um, um, I mean, I wonder how much I, I can actually say that. I mean, there's plenty some people probably don't know, like, 
actually a midget being inside of R2D2. Yeah, right. Uh, that's probably uh, a, a nice one for people who don't know. It's, it's not an animatronic, was, it's literally a person. There was yeah. actually, a, I forget his name, which is Kenny, too bad. Kenny Jones? Kenny, it's Kenny something. I know that him and the actor who plays C P uh, C three PO hate each other. Yeah, because C three PO thinks the actor for R two D two is literally a joke. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Tony Daniels is that guy's name. Yeah, he's kind Isn't of it, yeah Anthony Daniels. Yeah. yeah. Also, um, the whole reason Luke got attacked by a wampa was because before uh, the movie started, uh, Mark Hamill was in a bad motorcycle accident and had to had oh. facial reconstruction surgery. Oh, Kenneth Baker. Kenneth Baker. Thank that, you. That was the. Did mission. you know that George Lucas convinced uh, Carrie Fisher that women don't wear bras in space, so she did <laughs> yeah. the entire movies? I mean, my man. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, no. Here's another cool one. If you watch the not necessarily the Jedi uh, Return of the Jedi, but the first two movies. You can absolutely 100% tell that Carrie Fisher was on all of the coke. Yeah. If you if you know what someone's face looks like when they're on coke, you can yeah. see the movie and be like, oh, that's a lot. Did, <laughs> did you know that Grand Moff Tarkin, in any scene that didn't show his feet, was wearing pink bunny slippers? I vaguely remember that from some sort of YouTube list video, but not really. Yeah, <laughs> um, it was because the boots they had were really uncomfortable. For uh, Peter he Cushing, was a fucking theater actor, and he was not going to put up with that shit. Yeah, so just any scene that didn't show his feet, he was wearing pink, comfy slippers. Damn straight, I would too. Yeah, and also um, one of the cool things that uh, Carrie Fisher said about him, like in an interview many decades later, she had a lot of trouble with the line of uh, "I can smell your foul stench when I brought when I was brought on board." She almost couldn't say that with a straight face because Peter Cushing constantly smelled, I think, like, lavender or something like that because he was, like, a chronic cigarette smoker. But because he was a proper English gentleman, he had a scented glove that he wore whenever he smoked cigarettes so the scent, like, wouldn't rub off on him too much. Wow, I almost want to invest in one of those, like, now. Right? <laughs> yeah, Peter Cushing... That's classy as shit. God damn, that yeah. might be the classiest thing I've heard of, like, <laughs> last few months. I know, Peter Cushing... God, he's he's up there in my top ten favorite actors. He was he was Doctor Who at one point in a non-canon movie, sadly. Mm. But yeah, no, just rest in peace, man. Because Peter Cushing, he he is the Grand Moff of acting. Like yeah, period. I love the uh, the original Job of the Hut in A New Hope. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite things ever. And how they just completely changed it with no explanation or anything. Yep. Just and. When they're so in the after the cantina scene when they're leaving with Han and uh, stormtroopers are trying to get in Jabba yep. points out where they are and who they are and he's just a fat dude in like a fur coat or and, something. Yep, he's wearing like a fur coat and uh, wait, whoa, wait, what? Yeah, Jabba was originally just gonna be another human. Yeah. No, I didn't know that one. That's a new one. Yeah, oh, which it, I it looks really. I have the original DVD. We can. After this, we could pull it up real quick. We could skip to that scene. I mean, you can probably you. find it on YouTube. Oh, that's true too. But no, uh, like the scene where he, where Han steps on Jabba's tail, and it just looks janky as fuck. Like Han, like going up in the air and then like coming back down again, had to be edited because uh, there was no tail for him to step on in the original filming. He just walked around behind the human who was Jabba. Yep, <laughs> and he was just a dude in a fur coat, yep. just a that fat, is... weird-looking dude in a fur coat. Did you? Real quick, before we move on too terribly further, did you hear that they changed the Han shot first scene again? Again, again? again oh, again. I did. Yeah, it's oh, now... Right. On, li on, like, Disney Plus, I think they yeah, changed it Yeah, on the Disney again. Plus cut of the uh, Star Wars New Hope. Well, first it was Han shot first, which is, in my opinion, how it should That's, have been. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Then it was Greedo shot first, which people hated. And now it's Han and Greedo shot simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a fucking thing. Yep. Silly stuff. Yeah. So, Star Wars, original trilogy. Some people, a lot of people talk about uh, Return of the Jedi not being that good. Oh, fuck you. And a lot of people say, cool. yeah. Pe I... People say they don't like the Ewoks. Fuck you. I Ewoks understand, but I also say it's, fuck you. It is stupid. I don't like the Ewoks, but I'll take the Ewoks to the Gungans any day. Well, yeah. Uh, but, well, I don't even think the Gungans were bad. I think... Jar Jar I think the bad. Gungans were actually completely fine. I just watched episode one the other day it was, with Dylan, and the Gungans are completely fine. It's Boss just, Nass is fucking ridiculous, but yeah. whatever. He's he's just a little he's over the Boss top. Boss Nass. He's just a little over the top. He's not, like, ridiculous. Jar Jar is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. But the rest of the Gungans are, like, legit warriors and They're stuff, people. and are, like, yeah. like, an honorable, like, 
they're fine. There's nothing wrong with the Gungans. It's, it's just, that, just Jar Jar. Yeah, it's just that Jar Jar and Boss Nass got like ninety percent of the Gungan dialogue. Yeah, like yeah. I, I, I thought the the Boss Nass like <laughs> thing was the, the guy was the fine the first time he did it. I, I didn't think he needed to do it again. There was no reason for I, that. I can understand it being a weird nervous twitch of an alien oh. species. I can, I can rationalize. I don't think it was a way. nervous twitch. It's it was, thing he it was almost twist, like, like a, it was almost like an exclamation point. Yeah. At, at whenever he'd be like, no, 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 like, yeah. uh, like does. when he said that the Gungans would like stand with them and help fight. He was like, eh, we're with you. <laughs> and, yeah. Hey. I mean, I, I thought it was. Maybe kind that's of fun. his like fuck yeah, or He was basically or... Don Vito from Bam Margera. <laughs> <laughs> from from Viva La Bam. Oh, just yeah. he just. <laughs> um, but no, he watched and it's you know. I saw the Ewoks when I was little. Um, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous that they could just take down a bunch of Empire soldiers. But, but also, no, 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 fucking no. not all that ridiculous. Rational explanation. Stormtrooper armor is almost solely to protect against plasters, not yeah. a fucking rocket, rocket. they thrown in your head. Yeah, the, the reason I'm really, really willing to give it to the Ewoks now is because the Ewoks were fighting on their home turf. So, yeah, like, I, I get And the that. armor was not meant for physical impact. It was meant for blaster bolts and shit. And other... yeah. It was guerrilla warfare in a fucking... On a on Illiquid, jungle planet. Against or jungle Illiquid moon. Yeah. <laughs> and against soldiers. Yeah, like... what? What is the range of visibility on those helmets, you know? Like... <laughs> do, do it, we, I'll dive into the cannon later. Don't worry about it. it. In any case... It's more I, than it's you would fine. think. I'll leave it there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm sure, sure it, it is. is. But I mean... Yeah. If you're just watching those movies and just taking it at that, yeah, which is what we're doing right now, yeah, they, come on, they can't see to the side. They really can't. <laughs> they like they just can't because those things stick out about fucking six inches from their face, and then they can just see straight, which is fine when they're going down corridors on spaceships yeah. or storming plane, like a or place or you know streets where it's a straight line, <laughs> but you know. A big jungle where you could get hit anywhere at yeah. any time. Not going to be that great. And yeah. they're not that silly because you find out they plan on eating all of them at one point. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're going to fucking eat them. They're cute and adorable, but they are hungry for meat. Yeah. yeah. They're almost like a furry grunt from Halo, well, almost. I mean, they're survivors, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Just so, so, my number yeah. three was Army of Darkness. Damn fucking straight. That, yeah. Yeah. This one was hard because it was between that and Shaun of the Dead. And I was going back and forth for something in, like, the horror comedy genre. And I think I ended up giving it to Army of Darkness just because Army of Darkness has seniority. Well, we know Noodle here loves Shaun of the Dead. So what do you feel about that comparison with Army of the Dead winning out by a slight amount? Army of Darkness. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, Army of Darkness, my bad. I feel he is wrong, but... It's understandable uh, but he's wrong. But I also fucking love Army of Darkness, so yeah. it, it's it, I'm not mad. It was really close. I, I am a bit surprised. I am a bit surprised that you went with that over Shaun of the Dead. Well, but I, I, I also I figured Shaun of the Dead was gonna bit. be on your list, so... But, yeah, no, like, Army of Darkness, like... Yeah, because I was gonna pick the Star Wars trilogy, and I figured you would, though. <laughs> yeah. So, like, we got it covered, but, uh... Uh, like Army of Darkness, I would show to someone who's never seen movies. Like I don't know if I'd really start with like the Evil Dead movies, despite the fact that they're they're fucking great. But there's a, there's also tree rape in those yeah, movies. Yeah, that's a little off putting to most viewers. And like you know, nah. Ar Army of Darkness still. I'd rather watch tree rape than human rape. Fair mm, enough. Mm, I would uh, any day of the week. I, I would mean, rather see a mythical tree. Like if even if I had to see it in real life, I'd rather see that. That would be less upsetting to me than just watching a man rape a woman. I'd have or, to have more thinking time about a yeah. magic or a man tree. rape another man or anything. Yeah, fucking Oz. Ugh. Oh yeah, yeah. Oz. <laughs> <Oof, bro. laughs> even they don't even show much of that, and it's just like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Oh. But yeah, so like Army of Darkness, still very gory, but like the and, gore's played and, for laughs and in this one shop smart it's shop yeah. smart. fucking classic it I is mean, it's, it's a cult classic for a reason I mean I remember watching the Evil Dead movies with like you Justin Smith yeah Shawnee uh, who else was with us uh, uh, Dylan Dylan and Pete. Dylan and Pete yep, yep that was pretty much our, our group there yeah and uh, man cause you you guys were the ones who showed it to me first yeah and Fucking A, just fell in love immediately. That was probably like ninth grade. Yeah, that the, I first the, saw. the fountain of blood coming up out of the pit. 
more yeah. blood than is probably in a human body. Oh, way more. And then, like, the when he slices off the pit demon's hand and just comes up and slaps that guy on the face, <laughs> yeah. and then the blacksmith just... Ha <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Starts laughing his He loves ass it, off. dude. It's so yeah, good. Like, My thing it. I made works. It's, and then, like, the, the graveyard scene, like... Would may like I don't know if it would have been scary for the time, but like you know the skeletons rising up and then just like the five minute scene of Bruce Campbell just like getting slapped across the face with like bony hands and then, like poked in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, it's it's so good. So much classic dialogue came oh, yeah. from that movie. It's just oh stupid God. slapstick humor it's, and then just it's so great. Just, like what yeah, happens great, when a dumbass from dialogue. the future with a shotgun runs into some like crusade level fucking. I uh, I <laughs> saw. Which, a great picture the other day on that Facebook group, the yeah. Bruce Campbell fan club, and it's like a picture of him on set trying the different uh, prosthetics on for his oh, face yeah. uh, for the books. Yeah. When it when it's like sucking his face in and it gets a super long face. Yeah. Saw a picture of him like with that prosthetic on without like the makeup yet. Just goofy as shit. <laughs> it, it looked amazing. Which <laughs> but, also. Also, his boomstick may or may not be the most powerful mythological weapon in existence. Oh, it is. Because Why do you say that? plus eight billion to knock back. <laughs> yeah, and um, because the uh, the the character Arthur in that story is confirmed to be the King Arthur. Mm -hmm. So that boomstick broke Excalibur. Yep. Oh, holy shit! You're right. Yeah. Just think, chew on that mentally for a minute. Well, to be f no, that's King Arthur, so he would have Excalibur. Yeah. Okay. But at the same time, uh, oh, that, this is going to get real long and real deep. We don't either way, on. either way. Yeah. Let's forget um, a shotgun beating a cow. And then <laughs> just bad ash and good ash. The, yep. the... Sally Fox! <laughs> Sally Fox! <laughs> Sally Fox! <laughs> oh, man. I, I do that often at work <laughs> since I'm on the forklift like half of my day now. And it's always Jay. Jay. Jay spotting me, and I'll, I'll be like, okay, we're going to go do this, and he'll be not paying attention, and I'll be like, come on. Sally Forth! <laughs> Sally Forth! <laughs> and, yeah, and he gets it. Just, yeah, to, just so. so, so good. So much way. good stuff. The fucking claymation, or whatever they were, skeletons. skeletons I think they were stop everywhere. motion, not stop, claymation. Stop motion, yeah. And just the actual, uh, uh, skeleton models of yep. them just playing the the bone xylophones <laughs> and drums and uh i just watched a cinemasker video where he went to this movie store this movie rental store in oregon that's just still open and thriving and it's got all of these props it's got like every movie in existence and it's got them all on like vhs and then dvds and all these different nice. categories uh just show you the video uh, at some point because it's only like five minutes long. Yeah. But he's got all these props, like original props from the movies and stuff, and uh, he's got a skeleton that was used in Army of Darkness. Dope. And it's like, oh man. Besides the, all the other stuff he had in there too, but uh, yeah, if, if we ever get rich, we're, we're taking a pilgrimage down there to see various sites. We're buying the car from Sam Raimi. <laughs> Like, if, uh, if I ever get that much money, I'm buying the fucking Mad Max Interceptor from the Sam, car museum. Sam Sam Raimi would never sell I that think car. I'm gonna break the fourth wall real quick, since uh, the audience doesn't know, but I can see Noodle and uh, Andy's choices, and I am honestly shocked, mostly by Noodle, not picking any Lord of the Rings movie. Oh no, I very much enjoy them, but yeah, I mean it's five five movies, man. Yeah, there's. Not enough room that's, on these lists, which is why I, just which is why I'm shoehorning in honorable mentions when we get there. So yeah, um, but yeah, Army of Darkness, amazing, classic. Yep. Uh, just wonderful. Yep. Jimbo, uh, you're number three. Yeah, I think my pick's gonna be less exciting for the both of you because I picked this one specifically on due to only emotional and nostalgia reasons, which is fine. James Bond, Goldeneye. One of my favorite James... Probably, no, it is my favorite James Bond movie. Mine too. But, Mine too. Yeah. That said, I'm not a huge James Bond James Bond. I know, fan, but so. I am, and so is my dad, which, like, the one... Like, if I had to pick one thing that connected me and my dad, it was James Bond. Like, we both love the shit that we played Goldeneye together. We played uh, Nightfire together. We played, like, a lot of... All the James Bond movies together. Uh, Nightfire games. was... 
fun. Yeah. Nightfire was ridiculous. I loved it. I could play it right now. Yeah, I think it. I have it. For yeah, I know Xbox. you do because I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. If I had to pick James Bond movies, it would probably be go Goldeneye, Man with the Golden Gun, Moonraker, License to Kill, Doctor No. Well, yeah, those are all the most popular James Bond movies. Well, that, that's that's just <laughs> my personal ranking of those, which are my mm. favorites. Yeah, no, Gold, Goldeneye is my favorite. Just uh, oh, that's great. The thing between uh, James Bond and uh, Alec Trevelyan and uh, yeah, Sean Bean and he died. my very very first movie crush, Xenia on a top. Mm. Yeah, mm. Oh. played by Phoenix from the X Men movies. Man. Yes, yes. She, uh, oh. Uh, something she killed Jenkins, a man with Jenkins. her. Th- Jensen. She killed yeah. a man with her thighs. The yep. way we all want to go. Uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. Death by snooze now. <laughs> yep. I had to ventilate someone. God, and her death scene was oof, oof. Yeah. Like it didn't show any real blood or anything, but just the thought of that way to go. Just... Crushed against a tree from a falling helicopter. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Yeah. And just I mean, it'd be a quick the death. whole movie is just oh my lord. It's great. Like, like the I forgot his name, but the 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 Russian general. Oh, uh, Hagrid. What? He played Hagrid in the Harry Potter movies. That shut was the fucking that, that was that actor. Oh, shut up. I don't know his actor's <laughs> no, name. No, stop. Um, Boris. No, not Boris. No. Um, Boris was the computer hacker. The right. total con that I loved. Something you can't you can bring with you, but you must sit. On. What was the What was the riddle for the chair? Something God. you sit on but can't take with you. A chair? And there was um, also... I mean, I can They're right in front of you, and they open very large doors. Knockers. Knockers. <laughs> uh, I am invincible, frozen. To death yeah. <laughs> that guy was Nightcrawler in X-Men 2. Are you sure? Yes. Man, the 30-something-year-old in the mid-90s years. was Nightcrawler in X-Men 2. Yeah, same actor. Oh, I, had to, I had to look it up, because... God uh, damn it, you're ruining my whole life right because now. Because one of my ex-girlfriends presented me with that factoid and I'm like really? Hmm. Because it was Phoenix and Nightcrawler and Golden. I'm like wait really what? But yeah. No. Just, uh, I, let, me, let me explain. I think the combo of the game and the movie kind of makes it for me. Yeah. Like, I had such good memories with both. The movie I could literally watch twice in a row with no problem. I could. I really could. I could sit down right now and watch the movie two times in a row. My knee aches whenever it gets cold out. Do you know how often it gets cold in Russia? Well, actually, sir, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy. I. Uh, he's so good. I wish I could remember his name. Pierce Brosnan to me is the perfect James Bond. He, yeah. He's got. He's he got. Really the, he's it's got, who we grew up with. Yeah. That's why. No, I every think, every I also like, grew, generation thinks. That's like, I grew up with a generation that showed me all the Sean Connery movies too when I was a child. I still think Pierce Brosnan is the best. He has the charm of Sean Connery and the ass whoopery. Of the new James Bond, yeah. perfectly mixed. And, and, and he's extremely handsome. Yeah. Yeah. Pierce like, Brosnan. Like, it's Ooh. really close for me between Pierce Brosnan and Timothy Dalton, but Pierce Brosnan still. Timothy wins. Dalton was in two movies. One, I think, actually. I liked them both. I liked Timothy Dalton Bond. Sorry. I'm gonna not say anything because I know my bias is gonna. It's, dude. I understand. Like, I'm, I'm still agreeing with you that Pierce Brosnan was the best Bond. Yeah, I didn't like the newest Bond. Daniel, Daniel Craig. Craig. Daniel like, Craig. He, he, I only he saw the first role. He's movie. A, sorry. I only saw Casino Royale. He I just seen that one. He just didn't look like didn't look like he was supposed to. I heard they're really good, yeah. but I saw Casino Royale and I was like, eh. But well, that's that kind of how I am with any of the James well, Bond movies outside of Goldeneye. So. Yeah. Well, to be fair, that is uh, supposed to be James Bond's first mission as a double O agent, so he's not nearly as awesome. I think a lot of the problems people had with it was that historically all the Bonds have had dark hair and he's yeah. blonde. That's well, like, yeah, now they're talking no, I about. No, it was because he was just making, basically a badass and no other spy shit. He just whooped the shit out of one. That's it. Now they're talking about making the next 007 a woman, and it's like. You know what? If there's a proper passing of the mantle, I'll be fine with it. Yeah, if like they, it, if they make problem, it good, but if... I just... I swear to God, if they I've call seen, her Jamie Bond, I will be pissed beyond belief. Like, I'm not, I'll go in the theater and pee. Like, <laughs> just, I'm just honest, go like, in there and this pee. is not confirmed. I really think the name James Bond is actually, like... It is a code name. Yeah. It's pretty much confirmed. Yeah. It's almost yeah. entirely so, confirmed. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I just, I just hate them doing that. Because it's 100% pandering. That's all it is. It is, yeah. No. It would If they make the next Bond a woman, it's just pandering. It's not them, like, trying to make it... it it's not them doing... It. Like, if they did that in the 90s, people would would have been annoyed then. 
but at least it wouldn't be like it is today where they're only doing it because they're like, well, we got to do it. Otherwise, we're going to get a bunch of hate. Like, what do you mean James ghost? Bond is a man? Yeah, <laughs> what are you, sexist? You fucking sexist like, piece James of shit. James Bond is not a man or a woman. It's an identity. But it's always ever been played by a man. It's yeah. always a, a suave man. Yeah. So, you it's, know. it's because it's based off of Anthony. I, th- I think the You one know what was a really bad James Bond movie? The Inter- World Magic is... Secret Service. Didn't see that one. That was uh, one the it, World it, is Not Enough. I like that is one. Is that the one with the oh, main character, bad. the main villain, is the one who can't feel pain? Yes. It does have some fucking Halle Berry, though. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> I thought it was Halle Berry. I thought that was um, Die Another Day. You're right. Die Another Day had Halle Berry. Yeah. No, World of Not is Not Enough had some blonde bitch, didn't it? She had, uh, what's her face, from Starship Troopers. I don't know. The, the, the main... Neil Patrick Harris. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that blonde bitch. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the main female lead, Carmen. Yeah. That was her. That was her actress. Uh, oh, White huh. She-Devil from Undercover Brother. Uh, yeah. By the way. <laughs> yeah, he just, Undercover... on, he just rented the second one the yeah, other day. Undercover I came Brother home too. and was like, who the fuck rented me, Undercover Brother me. 2? God damn it was me. <laughs> and it's so good. It's not my list. I don't believe yeah. you for a minute that it's good. <laughs> it's fuck you, fun. it is. <laughs> Anyway, so, um, on to number two. Yeah. Um, so, I saved this one up because mine was one of the same of yours. Yeah. So I'm going to switch it a little bit. I had Army of Darkness on here as well. Oh, uh, okay. So, I'll just switch it up and say Evil Dead 2. Fair because enough. Because I think Evil Dead 2... I, Army of Darkness wouldn't have happened without Evil Dead 2, first off. It's true. I mean, Evil Dead 2 wouldn't have happened in the Wait, I know yeah, you're going Very with well. Evil yeah. Dead... Yeah, it yeah, could have. I see where you're going with this. You're right. <laughs> Evil Dead 2 just erased Evil Dead 1 and was like, what if we made it... I caught myself halfway through. I'm sorry. Th- they basically remade Evil Dead 1 and made it a lot better. Yeah. But while also still it kind of... They still have the thing where it's like, yeah, I went back to that cabin. They they still like it's a you came over when I was watching it. it it's not. Yeah, it's very strange. But I think the official thing is that it is kind of a remake. I yeah. think that's their official stance. But it does talk during the movies About like the yeah, I went one. back to this cabin. Yeah. So fucking ass went out there and that shit happened and he left and then he came back again with another girl Yeah, like, I and think then was surprised. I don't... The, I, if I remember correctly it's evil, very complicated. It's the evil dead hail to the king kind of fix that a little bit he's like yeah look i gotta go back there and like you know really face Wait, what happened the it's the uh, game on the playstation one. Oh, okay it was a survival one fuck yeah. i thought they were <laughs> making games out of that wasn't on that one not two. not that great it was very resident evil ish it had like static this... camera angles a lot of survival horror yeah. elements in it and see shit. It i don't think i've ever resident played that one evil. but it did do i mean one... fist, fistful of boomstick is where yeah. they started Hell getting fucking yeah. real but, uh, good but... hail to the king had a great mechanic where the uh, the triangle button was uh just made ash one, say one a one liner right? and every t- if you set a one liner within like two seconds of killing an enemy it increased their chance of dropping an item um in any case evil dead 2 it's a slight bit less ridiculous than Army of Darkness. I would say it's a good bit. It's less still ridiculous. well, yeah. It's just it's a good bit, right? Bit right less up until ridiculous. they shoot fire hoses of blood out of the walls. No, 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 no. And, no. And Army and of even, Darkness is nine out of ten ridiculous. Even yeah. that, like it, like I I feel like Evil Dead Two would have still been creepy if I had watched it back in the day. Yeah, for the and first if, like, time too. And if for the first time I watched it, I wasn't watching it with friends and we were all kind of laughing at it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, because it was. 2000 and you know four and yeah. you know but you know the scene where he's going insane yep classic fucking scene with the fucking deer on the wall and yeah. every, everybody's dancing with him yep. and he's just having a good old time which man seemed like a blast yep i want to live i want to live that one moment <laughs> for the rest of my life i want to live that one moment that character had just dancing with everything and laughing <laughs> with the deer yep Th- that that that's euphoria. Yep. And then uh, Bobby Joe mm-hmm. shows up, gets shot. <laughs> Fucking Bobby Joe. Uh, it's not the character's name. This is whatever. where, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the character was, fuck, what was the fat guy's name? I don't remember. 
I don't know, but his the fat, greasy, disgusting guy had a weirdly hot girlfriend. Yeah, how'd like, that happen? Like, yeah, that's money. an interesting one. But nah, that guy didn't have money. Oh, ten inch dick, probably. <laughs> um, possible. Although I doubt it. But well, possible. Then, what other possible explanation is there? Other than I don't know. Dick? If her name's Bobby Joe, and he was like a hick, maybe she was just a hick too, and um, he was the hickest of the hicks. So maybe. he she was got probably- his pick of the. Pick of the Hicks? Pick of the Hicks. She was probably his first cousin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, the, he the, was, the original Hick pick. He was her first cousin, <laughs> so he got first dibs. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> don't ask why that's a thing in northern Detroit. We don't know. Or not northern It's, Detroit, it's northern got Michigan. the whole uh, uh, Ash getting trapped in the basement yeah. with uh, Mama thing. Yep. Um a new and improved the, hand removal the, 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 Yeah, well, no, did, he didn't remove his hand in the first Yeah, he one. didn't lose a hand in the See, first you know, that's one, a no. case of me mixing first, shit up a lot of In the first that. one, he gets trapped under a ridiculous amount of shelves. Yeah. Bruce Campbell, the, the, a lot of people don't know this, Ash Williams, the character, his only weakness really is just shelves falling on him. And not he like... at a retail not, store, not, fuck. Oh, dude, not heavy shelves, though. Light ones. Very light, flimsy shelves. If they fall on him... He's going to take about five minutes to get out. So like, he's, His arm is going to go through part of it, and he's just going to fumble around. So Ikea is his kryptonite. Yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> he doesn't go there, man. That's why he works at S-Mart. Right. Because he's smart. Only, Shop S-Mart. Yep, only the heaviest industrial shelves for Bruce Campbell. Now, the second one has the, the hand removal scene. He gets the... Who's uh, laughing now? Yep. <laughs> Got <laughs> sentient hand. Yep. Uh, they, they, they. It's got actual giant tree demon. Yep. Which I think was kind of supposed to be the camera crew a little bit, maybe, but or at the, least some version of it. But then the camera crew like chases him through like a sparse forest and then like to a windmill in a clearing. It's the first showing of like dead eyed ash. Yeah. Which, I mean, doesn't happen again in the movies. But, you know, Devil Trigger Ash in the video games. Yeah. For some reason, I was about to say, uh, first time you see Devil Ass, and I was like, wait, what? What part of the movie did I miss? <laughs> no. no, he gets, uh, he's Ash. Dead-Eyed Ash. He get he becomes, like, a Dead-Eyed, but then the sun no, comes no, out I, and he goes back. No, no, I was making a joke. I said, yeah, I thought uh, you said Dead-Eyed Ass, and I was like, wait, what did I miss? I mean, that's also a thing. <laughs> Could be. Mm, I, I mean, Mama's it. ass. I'm gonna pretend I don't remember that. Um, no, it's really just a great movie. It, yeah. It, it's another one, but obviously all on the list that I can just watch any time and be yep. happy. be happy, just enjoy it. So uh, I guess that's my number two. But like I said, in no particular order yeah. for me. Except I will say that my number one is probably my number one. Yeah. Although it is several movies, but it's probably, anyways. Yeah. Andy. Yeah. So my num- number two pick was Die Hard. Die Hard, as the, you should. Die Hard the first specifically. Although Christmas the, movie. Yep. Although the the rest of them. It's about are, that time. Yeah. The, the that is my Christmas tradition is watching the first three Die Hard movies. Fuck yeah, first Die Harder. Three, shit. Die Hard est. Yeah. Die Hard, Die Hard Two, Die Harder, and Die Hard with a Vengeance, starring Samuel L. Jackson. And uh, Jeremy Irons. And uh, didn't Die Hard Three have? Uh, are you thinking the, the Richard Nielsen? The 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 Mac from the PC and Mac commercials. Yes, that was number four. Oh, that was four. Okay, yeah, yeah that it didn't have Justin Long. No, that's um, Die Hard. Um, shit, what Die was Harder. No, that's number two. Die Hard with Vengeance. Yeah, Die Hard with the Vengeance. Yeah, okay. no, that, no, that's number three. Um, or, Di- yeah. Uh, this is why there should be numbers, not yeah. different titles. <laughs> uh, a good day to Die Hard was number five. Oh God damn it! Shit, what was number four called? Go right, so, real yeah, quick. Yeah, I don't that, that's gonna on. bug me if I don't. It's Oh, god damn it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Live free or die hard. There, there we go. Live, yeah, that's the one with Justin Long. 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb, not bad. Yeah, they're all actually really good movies. They, they are all solid. Yeah. But I picked the first one because, partially because of the time it came out, and also because it had Alan Rickman in it. Oh, yeah. As Hans Gruber. Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. This is Alan Rickman. Yeah. Remember to take the (laughs) turkey turkey out out of of the freezer freezer so it can can defrost properly. properly. Do not disappoint me. (laughs) It it doesn't matter. (laughs) That's not the... (laughs) 
That does that part. Shut up, you, Jimmy. You, you ruined it exactly, except for the pork chops part. Yeah. Anyway, so when Die Hard came out, the the market for action movies was very saturated at that point. Like oh, you had definitely. tons of Schwarzenegger movies, tons of Rambo movies, a lot of um. You had Lethal Weapon going on at the same time. Uh, Which I feel bad for Lethal Weapon because for me, Lethal Weapon gets overshadowed by Sylvester Stallone and all the Schwarzenegger movies. Like yeah. it gets buried. For yeah. me, anyway. It's kind of the same thing happened to Die Hard a little bit, too. Uh, Not as much, but still. But anyway, I liked it because um, in a lot of those movies, like, you know, the main character gets injured, doesn't slow him down too terribly much because they're, you know, big, tough Schwarzenegger, Stallone-ish men. But, but John was, McClane gets fucked up in he's Die just Hard. walking on glass and he's like, oh, no. Yeah, he, he can barely stand up by the end of the movie. I feel like he could have done a lot to not walk on that glass. Yeah. Like, there's a whole... But he's sub- also an average cop. He's yeah. not a fucking superhero. I know, but I still just feel like there's plenty he could have done s- instead of doing that. Yeah. But, whatever. But <laughs> That's not the yeah, point. Yeah, there's like a whole subplot <laughs> they're, they're, of him they're, trying they're, to yeah, fight yeah, shoes. Yeah, talking about not the point, huh? <laughs> like, the, 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 the first terrorist he takes out, he tries to steal his shoes, and they just, like, straight up don't fit. And he's like, man, I found the one terrorist in the universe so, that has feet smaller than my sister. So what? I can fucking slip a pair of shoes, a tiny pair of shoes, on the soles of my, just the tiniest part of that and walk like that. Or just Just tell the dude socks. Socks would do enough to keep your feet from being completely Yeah, if you walk careful. Any number of things. Yeah. It was unnecessary. It was cool. Yeah. But it was like, what are you doing? Yeah, but without that, we wouldn't have had the extremely painful scene of him removing glass from his foot like a badass. Yeah, no, the scene was amazing. I'm just saying, with a small pair of shoes, I can put on Dylan's pair of sandals, which are fucking tiny, or her shoes, and I can slip them... To where it's you can just walk on, on your toes the front, kind of. yeah, the like front like fucking quarter, front fucking quarter of my foot, and I can, and I could move quickly that way if I needed to. Yeah, like you not like walk, in uh, a, a very fucking shootout way. with them staying on, but I could, bang, yeah, like a fucking weirdo. And it, anyways, yeah. we're getting off. Track. Track. So you know, just <laughs> seeing the main hero get absolutely beat. Not to the shit. point, no, I haven't. <laughs> nope. Yeah. And also, Alan Rickman's portrayal as Hans Gruber is just fucking legendary. Oh yes, it is. He's oh. he's such a nice man, and like his plan would have gone off of that. Like no one would say nice. I'd say classy. There's a yeah. difference. Like he's not a nice man, but he's classy. Yeah. Like one of my favorite scenes is when he's uh, taking the elevator up to like the top floor, and he's got the uh, the Nakatomi guy with him. He like looks over. He's like. That's a nice suit. Is it an Armani? I have three. And then he, like, spouts. I was like, yeah, no, I get them at this one store. I hear Yasser Arafat shops there as well. <laughs> oh, he's having a small talk with his prisoner? <laughs> yeah. He's also kind of gloating. Yeah, he is, but, like, <laughs> if he... It, I, if is that an Armani? Hmm. Poor. <laughs> I've got three. <laughs> but, like, if if it weren't for McLean, like, well, one, we wouldn't have had a Die Hard movie, but if Hans Gruber had just had his way, like, nobody would have died in that movie. Like, he was actually trying to go out of his way to avoid casualties yeah, until his plans started going I remember shit. hearing about that when I was watching, like, you know, video essays about the movie. Where I was like, yeah, Hans Gruber was trying to steal a shit ton of stuff. Yeah. Never intended to hurt anybody, really. <laughs> yeah. Like, he only shot um, Nakatomi because, you know, he didn't go along with it. Like, you're going to unlock the computer. No, I'm not. I don't know the password. I'm going to count to three. Pulls out his gun. There will not be a four. And then he just straight up executes guys like, alright, we're going to plan B, which I took into consideration, you know, in the planning phase, so it's all gonna be fine. And then John McClane happened. God, it's been fucking years since I watched Die Hard. I don't even watch it. It's been again. a very long time for me too. Yeah, they're they're that movie's just it's so, so good. Like I can't say enough good things I about it. I would say Die it Hard. definitely did a very a very large change to the action movie genre. Not not like a massive overhaul, maybe the same way Terminator was or like the first Predator was, but this did a pretty significant change to the yeah. action genre. No? It, it, I want. I don't know if I'm gonna say it invented the genre, but it definitely solidified the genre of like the right Joe Brown, no. like the the right guy being or the wrong guy being in the right place. Yeah, he's definitely the classic Joe Brown character. What the fuck am I doing here? I guess I got to do something. No. Yeah. And one of my favorite lines of dialogue to this day are when he's on the roof with a stolen radio, trying to call in like the police, and they're like. Sir, this channel is reserved for emer- emergencies only. He's like, no fucking shit, lady. Why does it sound like I'm trying to order a pizza? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, yeah. uh, Don Hurts. Oh, uh, I'm sure you both know this, but fun fact, when uh, Hans Gruber gets dropped off, like at the very end, uh, to his death, they told him it was going to be kind of three. They dropped him on one, and the, yeah. his reaction is real. Yeah. Yep. Because he was falling for real onto, you know, the, the thing. I don't know what it's called, but it's I guess, just the big inflatable thing from the land on. But they're yeah, like, yeah. on three, and they were like, one, boom! <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, what's it, like, uh, McLean's wife is like, wow, like, you're, you're like a really, like, what, you're doing all this because you want to steal money? Wow, you're just, you're just a basic thief. And then Hans Gruber's like, I am an exceptional thief, and since I'm now moving up to kidnapping, you should show me a little bit of respect. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, Alan Rickman, rest in peace, man. You did so many great things and Die Hard. In peace. Die Hard was one of them. Alright, Jimmy. Wanna, do you want to mention a few more things about Die Hard? Uh, or maybe the second one, since it's so it's a sequel, very close. Die Hard two, Die Harder. Yeah. Uh, uh, best, best tagline of any movie. Me best best tagline of any movie ever. I mean, and I mean that in the most ironic, yeah, I could tell. not serious way possible. Uh, fucking god they should have just kept what they should have done for all the sequels is just kept adding another er <laughs> die hard er er die hard er 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 die hard er 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 yeah yeah no die hard 2 it's a it's die hard in an airport with yeah. um i'm trying to think of like more famous people that were in that if movie. i remember correctly isn't each movie just a different group of european like like, yeah, I, I, do I, I think but, I've but, seen Die Hard 2 twice, and I don't think I've seen it in... Uh, the first three... Since yeah. I probably watched it with you last yeah, when the, I was, the like, The first 12. three are European criminal organizations. You had Alan Rickman trying to steal shit from Nakatomi sure. in Die Hard 1. You had um, a... Actually, they might not have been European. It was a con conglomeration of, like, a U.S. special ops team who made a deal with basically F Fidel Castro, but not... Like, they were going to spring him from U.S. custody and take him back to his home nation, and then they were just all going to live like kings forever. So not European at all? No. <laughs> and then Die Hard 3 was um, uh, Hans Gruber's brother. Oh, shit. Yeah, ended yeah, up coming Grube out. Yeah, Grube Hanser. Yeah, uh, this was... This was no. uh, not the Grube Hans. <laughs> no, this was, this was Simon Gruber, and you thought the entire time that he was basically after McLean to get revenge for his brother, which he kind of was, but all it the It wasn't sh his main M.O. Yeah, like, all the shit he was doing t was to keep McLean busy while he broke into Fort Knox and stole all the gold. Wasn't that the movie where McLean had to wear one of those signs? Yeah. Where he's walking around and he's gotta wear one of those for whatever? Yeah, I, I don't remember anything around that part except for him wearing those, one of those signs. Yeah, it was, it was Simon basically sending McLean to do all this crazy shit because he's like, if you don't do this, Mr. McLean, um, I will detonate a bomb that I put in a public place. So basically his brother is rolling in his grave at his brother's horribleness. <laughs> yeah. And so it ends up, he turns out, he's like, yeah, no, I didn't really care about my brother. We didn't get along. This was all just a distraction so I could break into Fort Knox and steal all the gold. Hmm. Which they got very close to doing. And then Die Hard... Which I find... Die Hard for a guy killed a helicopter with a motorcycle. Car. Or car, whatever. Yeah. Oh, uh, that villain was actually played by he. Pl I can't remember his name, but Harry he, Carey. No, he oh. played. Um, he played oh, Agent Forty Seven in like the Hitman live action movie. Oh, right. oh, uh, Timothy Oliphant. Yeah, it was him. And wow, he, I know an actor. I remember that movie yeah. being bad. He was, it's not. Yeah. If you played a bunch of Hitman games, you won't like it because it doesn't make sense because yeah. they're totally different characters. But if you've just seen the movie, it's a solid movie. Yeah. So Just is. Sorry. he basically I watching it and not liking it. But. Yeah, so Timothy Oliphant hacks the entire United States. Oh fucking Christ. Because he was um he was a like a pro seven bullshit. Yeah, he was a programmer for the NSA and um No, he was actually he was played by the the black guy from the Transformers movies, the fat black guy. No, he wasn't. Yeah, remember when they in the Transformers movies when they broke into his house and like put the gun to his head and he was screaming and stuff? No. The FBI agents came in? Was that Timothy Oliphant? No. Oh. <laughs> that okay, classic just... scene from Transformers where the like CIA or yeah, whatever no, store I, I, and the guy's freaking out. I thought what he... he was actually doing was was orchestrating Die Hard Four. Sure, we can oh. go with that. So anyway, he was a programmer for the NSA. I like that better than yeah. what it actually and is. After nine eleven, <laughs> he was like, "Guys, like, look, our infrastructure is like completely open to attack right now," and like nobody listened to him, so he just 
basically shut down the entire United States just to prove a point. And, uh, naturally... Which, by the way, is kind of literally impossible. Well, unless, I mean, you, unless you have 20 to 30 hundred different systems. Well, like, he... The, like, the way... Like, it kind of makes sense in the movie, because he had a whole bunch of people working with him. So, like, when he shut down, like, the, the natural gas power, he actually sent, like, a team of mercenaries to, like, break into, like, the main plant hub and shut it down manually from there. I mean, all of the government-run natural gas, not all of the private ones, which make up most of the... Sorry. Yeah, oh. but Die Hard 4 is the worst one of the bunch, even though it's a really, really good movie. So then John McClane and uh, Justin Long stop him and fix everything. And then Die Hard 5 is uh, John McClane's son is working for the CIA. He goes over and does something in Russia and gets caught. So John McClane just on his own dime decides to fucking hop a plane to Russia and go rescue his son. Fucking took him this shit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just him and his son like just wreck their way through like half of Russia trying to get out. <laughs> he is no longer a regular man. <laughs> no. He has evolved. Yeah, no, like, John, if John McClane weren't superhuman before, he definitely is now, by the time of Die Hard 5. Isn't the one where he just, like, hangs onto a jet, like, wing? No, that was, that was Die Hard 4. That, although he oh, was definitely becoming me. superhuman at that point. No, that was the point he became super, what? If you heard yeah. jet plane. That was where out, he right? grabbed on, and he was like, I can't hang on. And his son had just gotten the crest to go along with the tags and the digivice, and... <laughs> His son was like, Dad! And then went, McLean, did you buy all two? And also, uh, McLean's daughter is played yeah, by, um, yeah. what's her face from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? The, uh, oh, uh, the, the chick he's trying to get with. Very hot. Ramona. Girl. Ramona. Yeah. yeah. Right. I forget her actual name, but there's a porn star who looks just like her. Nice. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. All right, I want to hear Jimmy's number yeah. two. Die, we, did, we did it. Yeah, we did Die Hard. All right, so I struggled with number two, not because I was trying to think of what's my second favorite or my second most who should watch this movie type thing. I couldn't pick between two movies of the same series, and uh, see, it that's was a, why I cheated. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't otherwise write, I'd have three movies. I didn't write my shit down so I could be flexible because you picked one of my choices, and I no, you didn't. Yeah, you did. You picked. You picked one of my choices. It's the one you haven't got to yet. Oh, okay. And what was mine? I don't know what one yours I, I can't read to. yours. I can read his, Oh, though. yeah. I write for myself. If I'm writing for other people, I write good. But if I'm writing for myself, I scribble. Anyways, yeah. go on. Oh, anyway, I was... I could... I had such a hard time picking between Mad Max and the Thunderdome and Mad mm. Max Fury Road. Fair enough. And at the end of the day... Nothing. No. Mad Max Fury Road won out. My God, Mad Max Fury Road. If yeah. You, if you haven't seen that movie. Mother's Milk. Yeah, no, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's the only thing that matters. Mediocre! <laughs> no, when, when he, when, when, okay. So. When the mother gives her milk. Fucking Christ. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road is my favorite Mad Max uh, movie. Almost simply because he's not the main character, as his character implies. Yeah. He's a drifter. He's a wanderer. Which is why Furiosa is the protagonist of the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not what really made me like it so much. It was more just like the set pieces, the action. It is almost nonstop the shit they come up with. Yep. Oh my god. Yep. Like, the entire movie is just like, they really fucking did that. That's actual metal being shredded by an explosion. Fucking Christ. Yeah. And, and like, just uh, Mad Max's story and, like, how durable he is, yet how much he needs help to yep. survive, even though he's survived so far. And him well, and Furiosa forming a, I would say a more... They're Bash brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd say they're, like, it's like... They got to clear the way for the knuckle puck, dude. <laughs> it's kind of like a Goku and Vegeta if Vegeta didn't already hate Goku. Yeah. Like that kind of situation where it's like like their little this fight over, the like their little struggle over the gun. Oh, it's so good. You're like, oh Max is gonna get her. No, wait. Oh shit, he's gonna get oh, is he gonna Yeah, the yeah. Okay, they both win. The movie's just balls to the wall the yeah. whole time. The entire it's time. It's high tension, high action. It, it is and a it's, fucking great. It's movie. so yeah. high tension, so full of action, and guess what the main plot is? 
drive 30 miles that way <laughs> turn around and back. go back that's yeah. it that's the entire plot yeah <laughs> that, that's the reason that road warrior well that's not the reason but the reason road warrior and fury road are tied for my favorite mad max movies is because like you said max isn't really the main character in road warrior yes he is i mean he is but like all all he really does is end up helping the people because he wants gas and then ends up liking them at the very end that's really all the character yeah. arc he gets so the way it was described on the internet for those two movies is if you maintain your integrity and moral compass in the wasteland long enough you'll eventually unlock mad max as a party member yeah basically yeah no uh, mad max fury road is just some of the it, no it is the best practical action sets i've ever seen not stunts or not little things but entire set pieces of all practical effects. Yeah, like, set pieces of practical shit. effects, effects and practical stunts. Yep. Yeah, like, like everything. The dude playing the guitar on the front of the car was really playing he was the guitar. fucking doing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And like uh, they had to hire like they couldn't find any like regular stuntmen or actors to do like the the swing on the poles in the back of the buggies when they were throwing the explosive uh, beers. So they hired Cirque du Soleil members for that. Yep. Yeah. Which is insane. Like, they went all the way to make sure this shit would look amazing. Well, I, I think the, the stunt actors not wanting to do it was because of the whole... Uh, it's actually dangerous. Partly They're really because of the, feet up the Resident and Evil thing probably put a scare in them. That lady Resident. losing her arm. Yeah. Oh, uh, during the... Which Resident Evil movie? Wasn't it the newest one? I think uh, that... Or the last one? one? No, no. The last one. It's called Resident Evil, the final chapter. Oh, okay. There was a scene where she was, like, jumping a motorcycle... And uh, they like didn't move the camera crane oh, qu no. quick enough or something, Oof. so she crashed into it and had to have her entire arm amputated. And there's a whole lawsuit going on right now Damn. against uh, what's the fucking director's name? Paul W. S. Anderson. Yeah, uh, going against him and like the studio and all this stuff because I mean she lost a fucking arm because they didn't do shit right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that probably, although I don't. I don't think that... No, that hadn't happened yet when Fury Road came out. Yeah, no. But anyway, uh, Fury Road, the action, the, the effects are literally 11 out of 10. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I can't think of another movie that uses, like, you know, actual effects. Other th That kind of shit is maybe fucking bananas. Ma the closest that it gets, which isn't even that close, but it is the closest, is Dark Knight, where they actually flip the fucking semi. Yeah. But that that's about all I can think of. Yeah, that and that's neat. It's but neat. this is a whole movie of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like holy like, shit. And like uh uh Immortan Joe is played by the main antagonist of the very first movie. Yep, toe It's cutter. the same actor. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, like you must have known that he was like Yes. My time has come again. Yeah, right? Yeah. This is my final form. Wait, and, I could, can I make money again, please? I've been working at a Walgreens. Because, he, like, he has come back. Like, out of Mad Max, I think that actor was only in, like, seven or eight other movies leading up to Fury Road. Like, yeah. he, he didn't do much. Yeah, no, like, which is why I know that Mad Max is probably holding a special place in his heart. Yeah. And uh, just the, uh, the, uh, the scene where Morton Joe is talking to... Uh, it's not the main, uh, what are they called? Something boys? War boys. War boys. It's not the main war boy that, like, uh, it's not Nux. It's a yeah. different one who is, like, has a plan to get them while, like, Morton Joe is chasing them. And then Morton Joe says, if, doesn't say this exactly, but if, like, if this works, I will personally carry you that through was the Nux. gates of Valhalla. Mm. That was Nux. Okay, it was Nux. Yeah. And, like, I absolutely 100% believed him. Yep. Like, it's not a cult leader who knows he's bullshit and talking to this guy. This is a guy who's like, I will do this for you. And I was like, uh, yeah, like, and then mediocre. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you've lost your chance. Yeah, I read the comics leading up to that, and it started out he was just talking bullshit. Like, that. Did that, he convince himself? Yeah, he, like. Convince, well, convince himself and to give the guy confidence so maybe this will work. Yeah, it was, it was a weird flow. Like, it started out he was just doing bullshit, but then he, like, I don't know if it was because he went crazy or whatever, but he either started believing it on his own or he wanted to believe it so bad to inspire his henchmen that he forced himself to start that's believing probably, it. That's probably, I think that's the most. Because, like, Immortan Joe is not really shown as insane and not, yeah. like, in control of his, like, faculties. Like, he's definitely there the yeah. entire time. Until he's dead. In the, one of the oof, grossest deaths ever. Ugh. Yeah, that was, that was rough. 
But and I've already fucked up my list because I just thought of a movie that it's going to be a runner-up. Okay, runner-up. It'll, it'll be an honorable mention. Yeah, okay. it's going to be a honorable um, mention. I want to say one more thing about Fury Road before you go. It's going to be really short. I, I also want to say I want my thing to go last because I think it'll probably take the longest and the one we can talk the most about. That's fair. It's it's you know what it is. I know you what it, it is. Yeah. I so yeah, don't worry about it. You'll you'll understand. But you, yeah. One of the cool things about Fury Road, which Long it's kind time. of almost a bad thing, but not really. Like throughout the whole filming, uh, Tom Hardy, who was playing Mad Max, if you didn't know at this point, was like constantly butting heads with uh, the director George Miller about a lot of stuff. Like really, yeah. The original director of Mad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I, I absolutely. By the way, I can't. Of course. Yeah, I can't remember what it was about. Out specifically, I don't know if that ever came to light, but they were butting heads like the entire time. And then when like all the cast and crew like got together and like sat down and like saw the finished project, Tom Hardy actually like walked up to George Miller with like tears in his eyes. He's like, "I am so so sorry. I was butting heads with you on this. I was wrong. This is amazing." Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I'm glad he. I'm glad he took his loss like a champ. Yeah. <laughs> so um, honorable mentions. I mean, I could say Lord of the Rings. That is that is one. Yeah, these are going to be really um, short. Another big one for me is the uh, the Rob Zombie Halloween movies. As much as Rob Zombie's a douchebag, and I hate him as a person. and Is he a douchebag? Oh, he's a huge douchebag. I don't, even know, see I don't the know, way know much he, about him as a person. You even see the way he dresses. God. Yeah, he's got dreadlocks. That's about all I know about oh. him as a person. He's I, one of those artists who's very far up his own ass, but at the same yeah. time, he kind of deserves to be. I mean, I saw his behind the scenes for Three from Hell. He, does he doesn't not seem like a he doesn't. Guy. He doesn't. He he. I don't know. We don't. We know. Don't need to get into all of that. Yeah. But yeah. the the his Halloween movies, both of them, fucking love those. Like that is the best form of Michael Myers they've ever put into film. Uh, the newest one that just came out recently, uh, that one was great. But the fucking Rob Zombie ones, Michael Myers is just this huge, Terrifying. unstoppable fucking monster. No, he my favorite fucking one. breaks through walls and yeah, just, just fucking. Boom. And then yeah. the the beginning of the second one, which is kind of a dream sequence, but he's just fucking. Get, it's so good. No. It's it is honestly my favorite slasher fucking horror thing ever. Is those two movies. They're just fucking perfect. My favorite scene out of those two is when young Michael Myers beats the shit out of Junie from Spy Kids yeah. and kills him with a fucking giant log stick thing. Yep. Like, he's like, he was bullying him, man. I, don't, I know, but it, like, when I saw the, it. when I saw the movie for the first time, like, I still only recognize, and I still now only recognize the actor as Junie from Spy Kids. Yeah. So I was like. Um, Weird autistic blonde long haired kid beating the shit out of Judy from Spy Kids. It he was messed me up. Um, couple other ones. Uh, Paul, yeah, Simon oh, Pegg yeah. and Nick Frost, yep. and Never Ending Story. Fucking one of my okay. favorite 80s films. I feel like ever. five's not enough. Yeah, um, that's why I'm shooting in quick honorable mentions. There mentions. we go. So, quick, yeah, we don't need to discuss all of them. Yeah. Just, just other movies that I love. Yeah, uh, uh for me, um, the original Predator movie, Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah, that's always uh, going to be there. James Cameron's right. Aliens. The fucking, I scribbled it out because I put in other stuff, but I was like, I was like, I got too much sci-fi in there. Yeah, no, James Cameron's Aliens, and the one I actually wrote down on my list for honorable mention is The Mask. Which oh. I'm fine with talking about The Mask for a minute because yeah, I'm very fine. Talking with about that. people on coke like Carrie Fisher, fucking Jim Carrey, holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, did he do so much coke for that movie and for? Uh, Ace Ventura and shit, man. Yeah, like he the, is a fucking golden god. Yeah, the reason I didn't mention. Oh wait, is it coke derived, or is he more like Nicolas Cage, where he produces? Oh, it's energy? absolutely drugs. Oh, okay. He's come out and said that it's drugs. Yeah. Oh, that well, it's coke. I'm not aware of that. No. Yeah. He was doing so much coke. Yeah, I didn't write down Ace Ventura movies, although those also get a quick honorable mention. I wrote The Mask down because. For as crazy as Jim Carrey gets in that movie, which is the point, mm -hmm. there's also scenes of him legitimately acting like a somewhat normal human being, like when he's yeah. not in mask mode, which yeah, I you thought... You might as well say The Truman Show. Yeah. And besides the fact that's another movie that has a lot of, like, practical effects and just ridiculous shit, that's yep. just fucking awesome. Yeah, The Mask is a, a 
Man, that, great fucking movie. We just keep talking about movies that I need to watch again. <laughs> right. Yeah, so The Mask, Predator, Aliens. <coughs> um, I'm only going to say these ones because my dad loved them, and I also loved them. I loved watching them with my dad. Like, any World War II movie that was about General Patton has a special place in my heart because they're good, and I watched them with my dad, so... Uh, the the Rocky movies. Yeah, the, sure. the Rocky yeah. movies, including Creed one and two. Everything Schwarzenegger. I mean, you know, we could we can go on and on when it comes to honorable mentions. But. Yeah, Jimmy, any honorable mentions? Uh, I've got some cheating honorable mentions and some regular honorable mentions, and I will start with my cheating ones. Every Hellraiser movie. Yes. All of them. Oof. Sorry. Yeah. I yeah, wouldn't sure. show those. It doesn't to matter how bad they get. Movie, but <laughs> but it doesn't matter how bad they get, or technically how bad they get, but just every single Hellraiser movie is just so delicious to me on a primal level. Like, it chatters. It would also depend on the person. Like if it's yeah. someone who I know is like into horror movies and creepy shit, like weird shit and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Hellraiser. But like if it's just like, hey, new girlfriend. Come watch this. I'm not up fucking shit. putting putting Hellraiser on. No. <laughs> like, oh, Creep. We forgot to honorable mention Creep. I have not seen oh. Creep, so I will stay out of this one. Fuck, you guys we can gotta, go on. We gotta show Jimmy Creep at some point. Yeah, we do. I I have it. So good, very good. Ah! Good, but also Chatter Beast has a special place in my heart. Oh, damn straight. <laughs> I, I I like the the saw blade bitch. Oh yeah. I call her saw blade bitch. Oh, oh, I hate you making that noise. Yep. Well, that's that's shatters. Which, uh, except a lot faster. I can't possibly move my. Yeah, lips. me neither. I'm not cold enough. That was so weird when it turned out shatters was like a fucking kid. Mm-hmm. People so, are people are gonna be so pissed at my number right, one other, pick after my runs other. Uh, yeah. Any other honorable mentions? Jim? Devil's Rejects. Yeah. Devil's Rejects is. I I can't. It, it's almost impossible for me to watch this movie with other people who haven't already seen it. Like, I remember uh, Sierra came over one time, and I was like, you in the mood for a scary movie? She's like, yeah. And I was like, hell yeah. And I put on Hell's Rejects, forgetting so- the first 20 mo- yeah. minutes of the movie. Oh, man. It's it not, is so uncomfortable. It's, it's like, not it's scary. That's the thing. It's not a scary movie. Oh, it's some uncomfortable. parts are. Some parts are actually It's, sca- it's scary if you like... Scary. It's suspenseful. I'll give you suspenseful. But I won't say scary. It's just suspenseful. I won't say it's yeah. scary because it's like, of well, course, Captain if I was Spalding in a situation if you're afraid of clowns. with a fucking, it's more scary. Like when I don't the, think anybody, the sheriff or whatever, clowns. turns around and like starts torturing them. Like thinking about yourself in that situation is a scary thing. Yeah, yeah. it's scary. But, I mean, if you it's think not, about it. It's not immediately scary. It's not yeah. something like when I go to sleep at night. I'm not like, oh, what if I was in that situation? I'm so scared. Yeah. I can't sleep. Like. That's it's, not a it's thing. It's thinking about like, it in the moment that makes it I scary. actually used to have nightmares right. about Otis's speech to, about being a hero. Mm. Now, I actually had a few nightmares about that when I first saw the movie when I was 15? Maybe 14? Probably I just turned 15, I think. And that's when my dad convinced my mom to let me watch it. Ah. Well. Yeah, my dad loves that movie. Like, basically, House of a Thousand that's Corpses, a uh, Devil's Rejects, and Three from Hell. Oh my god, Three from Hell is so good. Hey, but it's not on my it's not on my list, so I'm not gonna talk too yeah. much about it. But Three from Hell, fucking watch it if you've seen at least Devil's Rejects. House of a Thousand it's, Corpses is kind of irrelevant compared to the other two, kind of. Yeah. Like, but those it two is, are definitely but, watched together type. Uh, movies. I do like that uh, Captain Spaulding plays a way bigger role in House of a Thousand Corpses. I haven't seen it in so long that I don't remember exactly he his does. role. Uh, well, he's just there in the bar the whole time. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> but but no, Three from Hell, not as good as Devil's Rejects, I don't think. It can't be. There's no way it could have been. And I'd say it's on par with House of a Thousand Corpses. I'd say it's a little bit better. I would say it's a little bit better. Like the, it, it, It's better it, than House of a Thousand Corpses if you watch Devil's Rejects and then immediately watch Three from Hell. And then it's like, yeah, fuck, I have the House of a Thousand Corpses. This is the complete story. I, 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 least I, I know me, it is. Just just for me, I like House of a Thousand Corpses a lot because it just gets so fucking ridiculous. Too many bunnies. It just gets so fucking ridiculous. Too so many it's bunnies. just like, eh. Yeah. So, um, so why don't you go with your number one and he will, and then we'll talk about mine. Because I feel like we can talk about mine for yeah. quite a while. Yeah. And then I think we should probably stop this one, take a break, and then we'll do video games because we're gonna otherwise, otherwise this one recording is gonna be 
fucking six hours long. Yeah, we'll take a break and then we'll get to our video games. Yeah. All right. So my number one pick for movies is Terminator Two. Woo! As you fucking should. Because, well, it, it's not on the internet yet, but I'll, so I'll say it again. Terminator Two is a perfect movie. Mm, wait, uh, rated against Ghostbusters. By the way, you didn't pick Ghostbusters. Uh, for that's one that's of them? true. We should also put because you say Fuck Ghostbusters them. is the perfect movie. Noodle or Nash? Don't worry about it. We're both noodle. Yeah. So like, well, we'll, we'll retroactively put Ghostbusters in there with our honorable. It, 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 it's it's honorable mention. It, no, it's number two point five. Sure. Not quite one. I just I I like. Put that on. I, 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 I'm, I take Terminator 2 over Ghostbusters because Terminator 2 is more toward my taste a little oh, bit more same than Ghostbusters. Like, Ghostbusters is, is a great movie, and I can watch it, yeah. but I am more happy about watching Terminator 2. Yeah. You definitely, I mean, when you look at your list of movies, they're all action movies. Yeah. I mean, Army of Darkness is, I mean, I'd just say it's a comedy. Yeah. But I say, well, I other, say the otherwise. mask is hardly an action movie. It's actually well. That's an honorable mention. I yeah. mean, of, oh, you're of right. his it five, is, yeah. yeah. Uh, like the the only thing Terminator Two is really missing is romance, and like you even get a little bit of that in the extended cut with it, it, with the dream sequence between Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese. But it's got comedy, it's got action, it's got like legitimate emotion in it, like the the whole the T eight hundreds whole arc of becoming more human. Like it, yep. it's the, got every very very. Smirk, was it last podcast scaling. where we were yeah. talking about how he started smirking, playing with them? Yeah, it? like that. That's the T one thousand. Also starts becoming more human, but more toward like the sadistic killer side rather yeah. than like the fatherly protector side that the T eight hundred had. Yeah, he's like, you told me I shouldn't kill him, so I blew his kneecaps out. <laughs> He'll live, <laughs> and yeah. like. The, the fucking what a life. <laughs> yeah, the, the scene with the minigun is still one of my A number one favorite movie scenes ever. My favorite yeah. scene is a little more subtle than the rest. I don't know why I like it more than the rest, but just like him talking to T-1000 as his mom. Yeah. And then at the end, it's mm. just her with the knife through the, <laughs> the like guy's the face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that, for me, kind of encapsulates the T-1000 ability and purpose. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like my other like a number one favorite scene out of that movie is the scene where um, they're in the lobby of the Cyberdyne building and like the SWAT team rolls in and Arnold's just like stay here I'll be back and then he like slow walks through that hail of bullets and they start shooting people in the knee and just mm-hmm. commandeers yeah. the tear gas grenade launcher shoots a couple of those guys and it, it's just so cool the, the cut between like Arnold walking, then the practical model that they're actually shooting at and back it's so seamlessly spliced together it's just, oh that... It's a perfect movie. It is a perfect movie, is what Terminator 2 is. And you don't even really have to see Terminator 1 to understand the plot. It explains no, that in, like, you, the first five minutes. You don't at all. I uh, I would argue Terminator I feel like 1 isn't... What? Terminator isn't, 1... I wouldn't say it's a great movie. No, it's and it's also, it's also closer to a horror movie. Yeah. I would ways. still say watching the first Terminator movie greatly increases the impact of Tia Hunter being a good guy. That yeah. is the real... Like, you have to watch the first one to get the, oh, what the fuck of the second one. Okay. Yeah, you yeah have wa- to watch the first watching one. the first one makes the second one better. Yeah, but the second one on its own is still, like, a 10 it out of 10. It is, yeah, it is. Like, we explain it, but, like, when if you want to be, con- like, emotionally concerned with the entire movie series, like, watching the first one and then watching the second one is, like, a whoa, which is why back in 1990 it became so fucking popular because holy shit, Arnold Schwarzenegger's a good guy in Terminator. Whoa! Yeah. yeah. I, I know the first time I watched uh, all three of the first Terminator movies was with you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I remember thinking the first one, I was like, meh. And then the second one, I was like, well, okay, we're going to play some Resident Evil 2 and then we're while we're going to bed, we're going to put it on again. And you'd fall you'd fall asleep in five minutes, and I'd put it on again VHS. Yep. And then <laughs> watch it all because I wasn't allowed to watch that shit at my house. Yeah. And then every time you came over, or every time I went over to your house, and you'd fall asleep, I'd be like, "Well, Terminator 2. Yeah. <laughs> Just th- that's that scene where. Um... The T-1000 and the T-800 meet up for the first time, and John Connor's in the middle, and then you just see the T-800 just, get down! Yeah, he pulls the fucking mm. shotgun out of the box of roses. Yep. And you think yep. he's gonna blow John Connor away, and then it turns out he's there to protect yeah. him. That's, uh, that's why Terminator 2 is Probably the greatest movie. twist of the 80s, and yes, I 
include the 1990 as part of the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> Early 1990s are part of the 80s, really. Yeah, just... That, that's why Terminator 2 is my favorite movie. It's perfect. It really is. Especially with all the background information you get. That's, like, that's uh, really... Linda Hamilton having an actual twin sister to play yep. her clone. That, by itself, is mm, tasty. Yeah, the <laughs> scene where they had to take the, the chip out of the T-800's head. Do you know the story behind that scene? I know it was a deleted scene. Yeah, so... they're. Real quick preface, just in case you somehow haven't seen Terminator 2, there's a switch on his CPU that they have to flip so he can actually start, like, learning shit. And yeah, there's they, a whole, they keep all yeah. their, like, assembly line Terminators from, like... From learning. Learning, yeah, yeah. to you know, so make there's it stable. The, there's this, it's a scene in this gas station where they have to do surgery on the T-800 to, like, get the chip out of his head. So the way they filmed this scene was they had, like, the gas station room where Eddie Furlong, John Connor, Linda Hamilton, and um, a model of schwarzenegger were on one side of this mirror and on the other side of this mirror they completely recreated the room in reverse and then they had actual arnold on the other side of the mirror linda hamilton's twin sister standing in for linda hamilton's reflection oh, and eddie furlong yeah, eddie furlong's writing double for all the motorcycle scenes was standing in as john connor's reflection which is why linda hamilton and eddie furlong were standing with their backs to the mirror so you couldn't see the other two people's faces and they had to like completely synchronize like all the movements they were doing and like like basically perfectly because they're looking in a mirror and they fucking did it so good yeah so good like james cameron man that, that i know you're a great movie director but like terminator 2 is your fucking magnum opus man there's no two there's no two ways around that oh man people are gonna be pissed with my with my number one pick compared to terminator 2 god, god damn it real quick you sent this text Oh and shit, my bad. You sent it to me oh. and I just looked at it and was like For a minute my brain broke. Sorry. He he meant to text you the you need a lift at ten. And oh. <laughs> it's just oh, like shit. Oh <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so your number one pick, Jimbo. Hook. I'm okay with Ooh. that. Yeah, I'm okay Hook with that, too. Hook is my number one pick. I'm Ooh. sorry. Ooh. I could watch that 24 hours straight. I really could. I don't Man. blame you. <laughs> like, Hook is my number one favorite. I mean, this is the one I actually kind That's of That's Dylan's dad's one. favorite movie, too. That's Chris's favorite movie. Damn straight. My God. Hook. I watched oh. that. Dylan and I watched that probably, like, five months ago. And I had, like, that much of a bottle of vodka. And it was, like, right when I was falling asleep. He motioned at about half the bottle. Uh, yeah. No, nah, a little less than that. And whatever. But uh, man, I got to that nice good point, and I was just the happiest person in the world. It was all Watching warm in the room, and Hook was on, and it had the the right lighting in the room. The main light was off, a couple lamps on. Oof! I just oh, it's so good. Like bang like, rang. Mo- yeah. a, a lot of the re- like bang, absolutely bang, 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 almost one hundred percent of the reason why I love this movie is because what actually happens in the movie, but. When I was much younger, I was kind of obsessed with Peter Pan and all of his, like, iterations, like... Exploits. So... I mean, watching, he's... Peter Pan's an evil demon, but... He kind of is. Yay, yeah, I mean, he is. actually is originally, but... No, he is. Not a demon, he's just an evil child, because children don't know any... But anyway, uh, Hook, just watching the stories I've read watched as a cartoon back in the city like all this shit and now it's grown up uh, pan yeah and just watching him Robin with his Williams. like mm-hmm. semi-modern life and like him getting transported back and him trying to relearn what he is like who he is Rufio 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 yeah did no, you know like, there was a side scrolling beat em up based off of that movie did you know that there is a 10 minute long short movie explaining how Rufio became Rufio did played you know by Dante Basco. That, Bosco, sorry. That, that, that's the guy who played Rufio, right? Yeah. That Dante. guy uh, on the Let's on... Play channel, uh, the guys who, from Rooster Teeth, the actual channel that's called Let's Play, Yeah. Uh, they have that guy on every now and then, and nice. he plays video games with oh, them. Oh, nice. Yeah. But yeah, no, just, like, the entire movie, like, like, I, like, the entire way that the world seems kind of like an actual like theater set piece oh yeah. but it also kind of because well, it is 
Yes, but it's it is kind of real. Eh. By the way, they they also a main person on their channel now is Lavar Burton's daughter. Nice, Misha Burton. Uh, That's dope. Wait, is her name Misha? I feel like it's Misha. I don't remember. But she is actually a main part of all of their let's plays now. That's uh, dope. It's Lavar Burton's daughter, and boy, she fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's LeVar Burton's yeah, daughter, say, so what do you expect? Have LeVar Burton? She, uh, like, apparently LeVar Burton married a French chick, nice. and so she knows, like, French. Nice. Also, Boy, she fine. real quick segue, because I don't know why this made me think of this, I guess, people I watched from my past. Um, my wife is obsessed with Good Mythical Morning, and they had fucking yeah. Carlton on there. Oh, did for they? For an episode, yeah. Just recently? I, pretty recent, yeah. Like, oh, I was just... I watched a few of their videos the other day. Yeah, they're, I I like their stuff. They're they're wholesome. Yeah, they're good. What was that? Anyways, we're talking about Hook. Yeah, we're talking about Hook. Yes. Yeah. The probably my favorite Robin Williams film. I probably go I Hook, agree. and then Jumanji. Yeah. Like. And know, from would, there, you can kind of mix them up. Would you really, consider like Aladdin a Robin by. Williams movie? No. No. No, mm. it's, a, it's a movie made good by Robin Williams, but it's not about Robin Williams' character. That's fair enough. I really the like. Way, no, the way they made it, it is was not it about Robin Williams. It is and it isn't, man. Like, I'd our, say it's a Robin Williams movie. Like unpopular opinion on my part, but I really liked Bicentennial Man. Yeah, that's a pretty unpopular opinion. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think I've ever even seen that one. I've seen it like once, and there's it, a reason. It's <laughs> yeah, it, it's it ends. It it's a sad movie, but just Robin Williams' performance in it alone makes it one of my favorites he's a damn good actor how uh, good do you get past the big battle at the end of hook good between the lost boys and the pirates okay. my god holy shit i also and, by the way you you're not even talking about uh the guy who played hook and dustin Shmi. hoffman dustin hoffman and the guy who played Shmi. anthony hopkins motherfucker their fucking Wait, no, not performances wow my in, god That's so cool. in that movie they were fucking amazing as well yeah. do you know what uh, they're like behind the scenes in instructions were how uh, act Smee like gay lovers act like gay lovers who were over the sexual part of it that's literally yeah. yeah like gay lovers who were over the sexual part yeah they don't have sex but they love each other and they're gay yeah and they also fight all the time basically constantly yeah. like he's like it's I'm gonna kill me Shmi and this is really me trying to kill me you better yeah. stop me Shmi <laughs> Shmi are you gonna stop me I'm not gonna stop you this time you motherfucker <laughs> you, I don't you tell me not to stop you like when I'm really telling you to stop me Shmi I'm really gonna yeah, do it just Shmi. like all the other times <laughs> fuck <laughs> Uh, oh, man. Man. And, and which just, is surprisingly dark for a children's movie. Yeah, but at the same time, like I, That's I grew the up on that shit, for and I'm not gonna fucking kill myself. Like, yeah, yeah, like just people they, get too sensitive about that. And shit like just when 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 Robin Williams fully embraces himself as Peter Pan, the rest of the movie is 11 out of 10, and I'm coming the entire time. Yeah, like oh, so good. Yeah, like so so is uh, Hook and Schmee. Yep. <laughs> Except not. Looky, looky, Except I got not a hooky. because I got rid of the sexual part. But. Yeah. Looky, Man. looky, I got a uh, hooky. Uh, just Rufio you know, dying the, killed the, me as yeah, a child. Yeah, the fucking... That's the part I don't like is Rufio dying. It yeah. makes it makes sense. It, it does, but it at the same time, it's like... makes the story better, but I don't like it either, but it makes I, the story better. I think Rufio deserved to get that hero moment. Or at least to, like, have some sort of... I mean, he still got a hero moment, but I think he should have had, like... Yeah, no, he sides with Pan. He sides with Pan. Well, I know, but I just mean he... Because he fights Hook, and Hook kills him. Yeah. But, uh... I mean... Do you think maybe he should have kind of defeated Hook, and then got disabled, and then Peter Pan came back? I think he should have... He should have, like, kind of disabled Hook, and then... Maybe knocked his Hook off or something. Something annoying. Maybe, like, like Hook's boys came and, like, got him or something. Yeah. And then, like... Hook got all strapped again, and then yeah, maybe he Pan Hook comes and realized he couldn't defeat uh, Rufio because he was that good. So he yeah. had his boys come in to get him. Yeah, exactly. So and then when Peter fights him, because Peter's not quite as good as he used and to be, all the pirates are terrified of him. Still, kind of once they really realize that's Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind so of the point. Of the either point. either way, it's still uh, just one of those perfect movies. Yep. Um, talk for a minute longer while I go to the bathroom about hook or whatever and yeah. then we'll do mine because i feel like mine will at least take half an hour yeah and then we'll take a bit of a break and then knock out the video games yeah 
I, I don't know really how else to talk about Hook, because Hook was, like, I already picked my pure emotional nostalgic thing, which was absolutely 007 GoldenEye, like, yeah. Bob GoldenEye. But Hook, for me, is a mix of both. I legitimately think is one of the best movies ever made when it comes to movies who don't try to hide the beautiful masterpieces that are its, like, fake backgrounds. Like, yeah. it is meant to almost be, like, a play to yeah. see, but it's an entire world extended into that. Yeah. Like, uh, right. the art style, the direction, just Robin Williams being fucking pan, yep. which isn't even the highlight. It's fucking, it's hook and shmee yeah. for me, really. Like, me? Me? What about shmee? <laughs> I mean, I can talk. Since, since you brought him up, looping way back around to the start, you brought up uh, Ivan Drago. Oh, yeah, a long time ago, yeah. I could talk about Ivan Drago for a minute. Oh, yeah, he's a PhD with the astrophysics, isn't he? Oh, well, Noodle's back, so I don't have yeah, to. Yeah, that was quick as fuck. I thought you were taking a poop. Oh, no, 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 no. That, that's probably what All he's right. going to do on break. Mm. No, I'm going to poop. All right, so, <laughs> your number one picks. I know my, what it is, let's hear it. My number one pick, picks, is what is called the Cornetto Trilogy. Yep. That's We've what talked I about it about. many, like, many times. Now. Yep. It's Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and The World's End. Yeah. Wait, isn't that the brand of the ice cream that he eats in Shaun of the Dead? Yep. In Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. and You see oh, a wrapper of okay. it in I've only ever noticed yeah. him eating a specific well, brand of ice cream in Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, he eats it in Shaun of the Dead, he asks about it in Hot Fuzz, and you see a wrapper of it Oh, in okay, that's why. Yeah. Um, oh, no, they eat in Hot Fuzz. Yeah, no, they don't. There's, there's the scene of it, of them yeah. eating it in the police car. Yeah. Anyway, Cornetto's delicious. I've actually had it. Pretty yeah. Good. I, I never have. Um, the, they're just the best movies of all time. They're, they're directed by Edgar Wright, yep. who is one of the most creative film directors ever. Yep. Like, what else has he directed? That he was supposed to do Ant-Man, yeah. wasn't he? I don't think he ended up doing Ant-Man. He might have done a part of it. I, I don't know. You can Google it if you really want to. But he was supposed to be involved in Ant-Man in some way. Either way, what he does with these movies is incredible. Yeah. You take, there, there's a whole video on YouTube about how he directs and how he directs the editing and stuff. Where, you know, most movies where you take a shot where you're traveling... And it's going to be like a top-down shot of a car driving or whatever. Yeah. And take that in hot fuzz where it's quick cuts of like the train station and then he's sitting there with his plants and then it's him on the bus with an annoying person or on the train with an annoying person yep. and then him there and then him checking just like quick cuts and bing 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 and it's interesting and it's quick instead of just the i i hate to say it but like bad boys style of just you hear a helicopter noise and it's a top-down shot of their car traveling yeah and that's in every fucking movie ever yeah instead he does it a creative way yeah um but edgar wright directing simon Pegg and nick frost starring yep um so obviously the first part of this trilogy was uh was it 2006 Shaun of the dead came out oh five, five or 2005 I, I i believe it's oh five okay i almost i'm 100 percent sure it's oh five I remember the first time we saw the trailer for it. I forget what movie it was on. I think but, it might have uh, been in Dawn of the Dead. It might have. Possibly. Uh, but I remember us seeing the trailer and we were like, holy shit. Like, this looks fucking amazing. It, it looks like just people fucking around with zombies. And yep. at the time, that was during the height of the zombie craze. Yeah. And I'm still in the height of the zombie craze. Oh, I I've, I've uh, never, I've yeah, never yeah, left. Yeah, we never, yeah, right, we never left. Damn straight right here. Hey. <laughs> we, we got you there. You missed my other two that I tried yeah. to give you, and you ignored Sorry. both of them. We got there. Yeah, them, we, we, we got there in Resident Evil 2, and we just kind of stayed there ever since. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Shaun of the Dead, perfect movie to me. Yeah. Uh, there, there's... I've met... I like Hot Fuzz better. Does that make you hate me? So does my wife, weirdly enough. No? No? Yeah. No. If you like any of these movies better than the other, it, that's, it's fine. that's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because um, I think Hot Fuzz is Because more... they each have different strengths. Yep. Um, I've met maybe, like, two people who have watched Shaun of the Dead and been like, yeah, it was... I, I liked it. It was fine. Yeah. I love Every, Shaun of the Dead. Everybody like, else who better. I've met who's seen it has just been like, oh, that movie's amazing. 
It's yeah. a fucking like, cinematic masterpiece. Even my wife, like, who hates gore movies, liked Shaun of the Dead. I mean, yeah. I... I Oh, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm about to make myself the outsider by saying I don't think Shaun of the Dead is a cinematic masterpiece. That's hard to say. I wouldn't call Compared it... Compared to all movies ever we've that, seen, okay. it's hard to say that. It really is. Sure. I'll would you say the, the best modern movie of all time? Would that make it a little bit more fair? Yeah, it did. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't Sorry, have to I'm, be. I'm long. making a way too much. Doesn't have to be long. I feel it, like it, Shaun of the Dead. I feel like the entire Cornetto trilogy just belongs in its own. Genre. Remember, we strapped ourselves really in for does. 30 minutes of conversation on this. Yeah. Oh, show. we can. Um, I mean, everything about it. The the Woody remarks and it all like with Shaun of the Dead. It very much starts with Space, the TV show. Yeah. Which I think. Haven't seen it. Haven't heard of it. Our our next one. If we do another thing like this, should be TV like shows. TV shows. Yeah. Because spaced. Boy. TV shows and miniseries. Fair, yeah, fair enough. Slight Fine. difference, but they count. Um, but uh, that'll be the next podcast because that's a lot of fucking ground to cover. I mean, yeah, on if you just watch the trailer to Shaun of the Dead, like we did, you just think it's this goofy zombie movie, which it is. But there's a which lot more it to is, it than that. But then it gets real fucking emotional and everything yeah. too like there is a whole fucking lot to it that fucking still like Sean, Sean's mom dying and all the shit that comes with that is that the part where they throw the, the records or is that no, no that's, that's at the, the very no, Sean's mom dies close to the end of the movie oh, yeah. Okay, yeah it's uh, been a while since I've seen it I should probably watch hey, it again just, with just the, contrast the that scene with oh he's got an arm off <laughs> yeah. he's got an arm off uh, and the record throwing scene. The record throwing was great. Uh, Shaw Day. That's Liz's. Well, she didn't dump you. Fuck this. I'm going to the shed. <laughs> Isn't it locked? I thought you said it was locked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. Uh, it's really just. I mean, it's it's constant hilarity. And even after like once, pretty much, I think near the end, once Sean's mom dies is where it starts, like, it gets super fucking emotional. Yeah. Even though there's, like, silly the, shit the, happening the little it. silly shit at first. Oh, when, Sean, look who it is. When she, Fuck a doodle do. But, I mean, when she first is, like, she's dead for a minute, and, you know, Daft is pointing a gun at my mom. And Don't this look isn't, that gun at Barbara. This isn't exactly fair. Here. <laughs> Then he grabs a corkscrew, and it's just like, hey, don't that was fair. That. <laughs> hey, don't exacerbate thing. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. There's tons of callbacks, so many references, just... Daisy showing up. Fucking, and Martin Freeman. I feel like yep, my Daisy opinion and Martin is Freeman. by the fact that I haven't seen this movie enough times. It's okay. Because y'all are quoting yeah. quotes. I'm, I uh, can't even... Multiple times we've quoted the movie from beginning to end. I think... It's probably. I think our I've most seen watched. the movie over two hundred times. Yeah, it's definitely Holy our shit. most watched. Not, that's, not my, even you, that's my hook. Yeah. Yeah. Like fuck. Uh, yeah, that's easily me and you's most watched movie. Oh, it's by far. Day. That was just like we'd be playing video games in my room, and you just want and, to just put it on the other TV yeah, for background noise, and yeah. it oh, would I'm, it would still be watching it, but it'd be yeah. like, oh, I'm also playing Resident Evil Two or something. I have a retroactive yeah. uh, uh, retroactive choice for my uh, top movies. The runner up is not a placeholder, but. Resident Evil Extinction was the very first R-rated movie my parents allowed me to go to. Okay. And before that, I had seen the first two once each before that. Yeah. And for me, at the time, Resident Evil Extinction was the best. Not because of the story. It was just like post-apocalyptic. Oh, Alice is on her own. Cool. Shit yeah. gets crazy. Like... There's a bunch of LJ like Wayne. sacrifices yeah. and like when she gets Hiding shit though. when she gets yep. trapped by like the people putting on the radio signal and they're like ah you dumb bitch and, and she's just like God you guys have no it idea was, what you're in it for. It was it was the man. last of the Resident Evil movies that that were good good that, or at that, least kind of good good that I mean, felt like an actual like Resident Evil movie yeah, like this is what happens after the Resident Evil shit uh, goes down when everything is destroyed. Mm. The, the final chapter one, you, didn't you watch that with us? We watched that out here with Ryan and Erica. Oh, yeah, well, it was trash. I don't remember the final chapter. I haven't even seen it yet. 
I must um, not remember it because that might, might have been how bland it was. Because the last uh, no, Resident Evil movie I can remember action. is Afterlife, when there's a bunch of clones of Alice. Was that with Jorah Mormont? Yeah. Well, Jorah Mormont's there through a lot of it. Okay, got it. <clears throat> In any case, um, yeah, sorry. So, Shaun of the Dead, that's definitely my favorite of the three. Yeah. Um, and honestly, my second favorite. Yep. Well, doesn't matter. So the next one that came out was Hot Fuzz. Yeah, and, that's my uh, wife's favorite. That and I love cults. That's why I like. I know it the most. that I and something cults. else came out on the same day. Some <clears throat> Hot Fuzz and some video game came out on the same day. Me and Sean. What year did Hot Fuzz come out? It was after we graduated, wasn't no, it? No, yeah. it was like two thousand. I think I was a junior oh, because so we. I was year? Just name I was year. Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven or two thousand eight. Halo three. No, because. Halo 3 was my senior year. Uh, 2007 was Halo 3. No. I was there. Oh, anyway, whatever. Hot Doesn't Fuzz. Doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, Hot Fuzz, also brilliant. It's yep. probably, I say my it's my least favorite of the trilogy. Yeah. Understandable. But it's still fucking amazing. Yep. I only it, like it's it as my favorite like, it's cold shit now. It, it fucking, like, I hate to even call it my least favorite because, because it's, it's great. It's still just one of my top movies of all time, hence yeah. it sharing the number one spot. Hey, hey, hey what's your mom about? Hey, hey, what's your mom Hey, what do you want about? <laughs> yeah. Fucking uh, Argus Filch. Not, not even speaking English. All of the, all of the, there's tons of action movie references. There's, you're all fucking chain. It's all obviously just constantly the mountain don't forget the mountain or the, no, the hound uh, the hound was right. in it yeah, yeah. yarp which yarp. also one of the most brilliant bits of writing ever so the character the mountain played uh or, god damn it you fucked me Sorry. up the hound played uh could only say yarp and that was yarp. his word and he was like yarp. he was like retard well you think he can only say yarp because yeah. you only ever see him say yarp, yarp. and that yarp. means yes yeah so during one scene in the movie He's sent to kill uh, Nicholas, Nicholas and uh, which is Simon Pegg's character. Yep. And uh, Nicholas Just bashes him over the head with the peace, peace lily. Yep. And uh, the bad guy, you don't know who it is completely yet. Yeah. Uh, is like is he's radioing him and asking if it's taken care of and yep. all this stuff. And Nicholas is sitting there being like, "Yarp." Yarp, and he's like, and he's down, and he's like, Yarp, and no one's gonna find his body. No, 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 it was like, and he's not gonna get back up right. again, and he's like, Narp, <laughs> <laughs> and good. <laughs> it's just so fucking perfect. Narp. The first, first time I watched that movie was with Sean Jones, and we lost our shit. Just Narp, <laughs> just. So fucking good. And the the whole movie, it's just this giant conspiracy theory. And then the last, like, 45 minutes is just balls to the wall, dope-ass action. Yep. It has a, it has the uh, machine from Shaun of the Dead in it. The yep. Bam, 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 yep. During the middle of a shootout. And it's just constant, like, all the people that Nicholas, Simon Pegg's character, was, like, pointing out as being sketchy end up fucking whipping guns out of their tr their coats and all this stuff and uh oh fuck off grasshopper uh mm -hmm. what was uh uh nick frost character in the movie what danny butterman name? danny he was the sheriff's uh, son danny ends up like helping him while he helps pretend he's that he's dead and stuff and tells him to go away but when he comes back he ends up helping him yeah and uh and then so do the rest of the cops when they're kind of like, oh, everything is fucked and the yeah. the sheriff is fucked. And He's not Judge Judy and Executioner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Judge Judy, oh my god. I don't know nothing about <laughs> no skeletons. skeletons. Man, people do not get it when I call skeletons skeletons. And Nobody sad, ever man. gets it. Nobody ever, ever says anything about it. I had one girlfriend one time be like, Skellington? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you wouldn't know nothing about it. <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> like, Crusty um, jugglers. And so, 
Uh, but honest, uh, honestly, The World's End, it sits very, very close to Shaun of the Dead That's for me. That's actually my favorite. That doesn't that doesn't surprise me because it's right there for me. I think yeah. Shaun of the Dead is there for me because zombies and nostalgia, but The World's End, it's like Mwah. it's Mwah. like Mwah. lips are like a centimeter away from the butthole of Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> like it's right fucking there because it's it's so good. Shaun yeah. of the Dead, Shaun of the Dead, fucking uh, Shaun of the Tank. <laughs> uh, Simon Pegg plays what's his name Gary King. Yeah. Uh, just a burnout drug addict who peaked in high school. Yep. And uh, he's getting his old boys back together. Go on a road to trip. go back to their old hometown. To do the legendary pub crawl. To do the uh, what do they call it though? I think it's literally called like the pub crawl. Well, it's a pub. Crawl. They call it the. Uh, Man, I swear they call it something else. The, the Gold Mile. Right. The Gold Mile. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Which it's like twelve pubs, yeah, and in a night, and you got to drink a pint at each pub. Yep. And uh, they attempted it back then, but for various reasons, like people leaving to get hooking up with people or people getting too drunk, whatever. Also, Martin Freeman plays a main character in this one. Martin Freeman does. Uh, so there's Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, uh, Martin Freeman, and the other two guys are famous actors too. Yeah. Uh, famous, famous in the Britons, not necessarily in the Americas. Yeah, um, but uh, basically, they go back there and they pretty much find out the whole time uh, how Simon Pegg's character Gary gets them together is basically lying to all of them. Yeah, and like borrowing money from all I of them. Thought, to, I thought he only lied he, to like most he, of them. There was like a, no, the first he, it was one all or two. He lied to all of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he also like borrowed money from a couple of them so that he could pay back Nick Frost character yeah. because that, that that's that's borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. No, it's not. Still owe Paul. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, basically he needed to pay back Nick Frost character who kind of hates him now yeah. because of some sort of drunk driving accident that made Nick Frost character never want to drink again. Yeah. Because he drunk drove and got fucked up. And like Simon Pegg's character just took off, so yeah, he wouldn't left get in hold trouble. The bag. Yeah. Like the reason this one is my favorite before getting into any plot stuff is I really, really empathized with Nick Frost's character, who ironically his name was Andy. And yeah. like I've had a lot of friends who wound up exactly like Simon Pegg's character. So mm-hmm. like I fucking get that character. Like I really understand what he was yeah. going through. Buck and I went through kind of a phase like that for a while yeah, where I, I wasn't, was a shithead. I wasn't going to be putting your business up out there like that, but... Yeah, that, that was a shithead for a while. I saw probably my second best friend die, and yeah. that fucked me up for a while. Yeah. Now, only drink on the weekends, go to work every day. Yeah, I'm a good boy. on the weekends, and I only see you on the weekends. <laughs> well... Hey, I no, gotta be asleep. don't a, even try. You also don't get even. home at 10 at night. I normally... Even when I got off at 5. I'm normally asleep by 10.30. Even when I got off at 5. Well, we'll anyways, yeah. Um, we'll cut that out. And whatever. Um, but no, I I've been the John to your Dave for a long time. Yeah. Except it got extreme there for a couple years, and hey, I'm out of that now. Yeah. So uh, which ironically, Hot uh, Fuzz is still the best move. Like, Sorry. <laughs> ironically, that's what happens to uh, uh, Gary at the end of uh, The World's End. He gets it. He gets out of it. Yeah. Wait, is Takes the world, the world ending. Yeah. Well, is the world's end the one where the uh, movie literally ends with everything going back to the, the medieval age? Yes. Okay. Well, kind of. Kind of. So, you know what I meant, though. Like it kind of does general. But well, I thought, like, like it no, doesn't. It doesn't. Like the world's infrastructure does. literally collapses. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like infrastructure. Just yeah. Um, but the whole the thing is, but. they they go back to their hometown. And they start doing it, and they notice people are acting weird and stuff. Yeah. And so uh, Simon Pegg's character ends up going to the bathroom. He's annoyed because Andy won't drink, and like the yeah, the <laughs> the chick he liked had showed up. His one friend's sister that was with him. Yeah. Uh, fucking, what's his name? Sister. Uh, we were just saying his name. 
Martin Freeman? Martin Freeman's sister shows up, and he has a crush on her, and the other dude does, too. Yeah, she was played by a and... Carl Urban's sister from the Doom movie. Yeah. Rosamund uh, Pike, that's her name. But goes to the bathroom, gets a gets in a fight with a young'un, because there's, like, still, like, a hole in the Whoa. wall from where he, he punched it, and he was like, I hand. did that. Yeah. Don't remember what it was for, it was probably over some stupid shit. And the kid won't talk to him at all and stuff. So they he gets in a fight with him, and he ends up, like, tackling him into a stall and his head breaks off on yeah. a toilet oh. and it's just blue goo that comes out yeah, and yeah. like a shell and uh, that's when like the rest of his <laughs> friends come in and are like what the fuck are you doing you're a piece of shit uh, he lied about his mom dying yeah. that was the big thing yeah. he lied about his mom dying to get everybody to come with him yep. and, and his mom calls his him mom call- he left his phone out there and his mom called and Nick Frost comes in and is like, yeah, just talk to your fucking mom. What the fuck? And he's like, no, stop, look. <laughs> because the fucking robot is sitting up and everything. Yep. And uh, then the rest of the friends who are... They aren't young versions of them, but they're similar. Close enough. And, uh, yeah, there's a whole... That's where... Because I didn't see any trailers for the movie. Me neither. And I just, I, knew... I just knew it was coming out, and I went yeah. and watched it in theaters. Yeah. And, uh... I think... Did we go together? I think we did. Yeah, weirdly enough, my fiancé at the time ended up hating that movie the second the alien robots showed up. I swear it got fucking even better. It was already I good. I know, right? And then it just gets over-the-top action, where there... It's, like, all these fucking, like, ridiculous shots of them just yeah, I fucking s- fighting these robots I in the bathroom. I swear they were pulling out moves from a Street Fighter and Tekken during those fights. I swear mm-hmm. they were. I, I think I saw uh, Nick Frost, like, do a straight-up, like, King from Tekken powerbomb. Oh, he did. He, yeah. he elbow-dropped a guy on yeah. his head. But they end up deciding, like, hey, everybody here thinks we're doing the pub crawl. Yep. So we gotta do the pub crawl. We- and they're on, like, the fourth or fifth bar. Yeah. So, like, shots had come to the table, and yep. Nick Frost just downs them all. Yep. And he's like, all right, I'm caught up now. Let's go. <laughs> if, we, if this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing. Yep. And then just continuous hilarity ensues there's the part i don't even remember what exactly happens but nick frost is like well he's all drunk and he's like this is what we're doing this is what we're doing and he goes to go into the bar and just punches his hole through the window of the door and <laughs> yeah. stumbles in and uh, then it starts getting more serious and they just fucking it ends with them talking to this uh like, the main power that's controlling all these robots. Yeah, like, controls the internet and, like, global power and stuff like that. Yeah, Basil's still running around all weird yep. the whole time. And, uh, uh fucking the, the big voice, uh, voiced by, uh, Philip. Yep. And, uh, so they have a final showdown. Sean gets to the last bar. Or, I keep calling pub. it. Simon Pegg gets yeah. to the last pub, and Nick Frost is trying to keep him from drinking the last pint. Yeah. Which, at that point, fucking let him do it. In my opinion, like, I get it's supposed to be the point of it, but, like, there's a whole emotional scene where it's like, yeah, I went to rehab, and, like, they were telling me when I had to go to bed and shit, like, and it then, was fucked. Yeah, like, you find out that uh, Gary, Sean's character, like, tried to kill himself at some point. Because that's how bad it got. Yeah. And, uh, like, when they were asking him to show him his wrists, because the replicas didn't have any scars or anything. Yeah. So there was a point where they were all showing, like, scars and stuff. And, uh, Andy he didn't, didn't want to show him his wrists. And, like, tattoos wouldn't be there either and yeah. stuff. And, like, Andy uh, had a scar, which you found out was from the car accident. Yeah, like, like that... a big scar on his wrist or yeah, something. Yeah, and he, like, did not want to show it because it was just, like, that bad of a memory for him. But, uh, they, whatever, they end up getting there and they have this big drunken showdown with this hive mind thing with yeah. all of these replicas all around them where they're just like, humans are more fucking stupid and stubborn and whatever. And the Damn hive- straight. We want to be free. Yeah. We're free to do what we want to do. Yeah. We want to get, what was it, toasted, lit? We want to get, well, what is it? Yeah, no, oh, whatever. Yeah, British term. We want to get wasted. No, because it's a quote from an American guy, isn't it? Uh, uh, we want to uh, get wasted. Yeah. We want to have fun. Like, yeah, look up the quote. It's gonna bother me. Um, but it's gonna. It's we want to be free, free to do what we want to do. We want to get blank, and we want to have a good time. Is the exact. I think it's we want to get wasted, but uh, 
Loaded. We want to get loaded. Loaded, yeah. We want to get good. loaded and have a good time. And then the, the big AI is just like, fuck it. Fuck it. Do what you want. We're leaving. And then, like, the aliens leave and take, like, the internet, global power, and, like, 90% of technology with them. Because the whole point was the big AI was, like, trying to build up humanity to, like, get ready to join the intergalactic community. But they're, then it was like, you all are just fucking morons. Yeah, the, the <laughs> like, last thing by the, like, hive mind was just, like, fine then. Fuck, Fuck it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts, like, blowing everything up and they gotta <laughs> escape. And uh, then, yeah, the there's the epilogue where, uh, turns out, uh, Gary King, Simon Pegg's character, yeah. had, like, saved the replicas of his young friends. Yeah, because they showed young versions of them. were like, yeah, we can, like, transfer your mind into these immortal bodies, and you can, like, join the community forever and shit. And they're like, nah, fuck that. It wouldn't really be me. Yeah. And, uh, but he saved his friends' bodies, and, uh, so he's traveling weren't around with called, them. They were called blanks, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, uh... Also, Martin, there, there, Mar there is a whole thing where, yeah, like, Martin, Martin Freeman's Freeman. character got had, taken. like... Well, he got taken, but, no, he got his the top of his head knocked off. Yeah. So he had, like, a volleyball... It was a soccer a, ball. Yeah, whatever, attached <laughs> to the top of his head with, like, happy eyes, and he was, he was still, like, selling real estate yeah. in this dilapidated ra wasteland, and, <laughs> oh, like... Yep. Jesus. Uh, Nick Frost's character was, like, living happily with, like, his wife and kids. Yeah. And, uh... And, the, uh the, so, so was the, the other character who had been bullied. Yeah. Except he was a replicant, but he could... So he could make, like, his hand... It, it had the one scene where he made... His wife didn't know about it. No, that but, was Martin like, Freeman's character. No, Martin Freeman's character. I swear to you, Martin no, like Freeman... He, yeah, no, he did the hand thing, though, because the, uh... The only guy that got blanked was Martin Freeman. And like, no, Martin Freeman got blanked, and so did the other guy because he died. They left him. He died when he was trying to beat up the bully. Are you sure? All of the replicants. I'm absolutely okay, positive. Look it up, because like, all of the blanks. No, I don't even have to. I promise, I'm right. Oh right, there there was that other guy. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. I was the I, dude who got bullied, and he yeah. was like beating the guy yeah, up, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. were like, "No, we have to go. It's not worth it." And he was like, "Yes, it fucking is." And he kept beating the shit out of the guy. Yeah, I completely him. forgot that he was a character. I was. For some reason, so in the yeah. in the thing he'd been replicated or whatever. And yeah. He did the the, the hand, hand thing. thing where he made it like go on top of his head. Yeah, and then the other guy ended up with uh, Rosamund Pike, who Gary had a crush on. Yeah, with uh, Martin Freeman's sister. Yeah, and they, then they ended up together. And then uh, Gary was he like, at the they, end. He had the replicants, and they yeah. went to this like bar. Yeah, like a straight up like, Fallout bar. And they were like, yeah, no, 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 blanks. no blanks here and stuff. And he was like, really? Because we just want just... some water. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> five of your finest glasses of water, please. No blanks. And yeah, yeah they end up pulling out swords and shit at the end. Like they're yeah. going to fight the whole place. Yeah. And uh, man. Yeah. That that one, like I said, it's it's kissing the butthole of Shaun of the Dead. It's, yeah. It's not quite on par with me. And I mean, really... Hot Fuzz is is not too far away of the butthole of either of them, but yeah. it's still oh, my. Hot Fuzz is so good. Like, I love cult. It is. I love cultists. It's, like, it's I, amazing. I think we got a good balance because you love Shaun of the Dead, I love World's End, and the gravy loves Hot Fuzz. So oh, like that, that, no, that, the cheese dip. The cheese dip. Yeah, the cheese dip loves Hot Fuzz. I love all of them. Yeah, I mean, but, so I mean, do we. But, but when we're, we're all talking about we favorites, all, yeah. when we all pick favorites, so yeah. Yeah, so let, let's take a bit of a break because I'm glad I, we're such people. Yeah. I also got a urine, so we'll. Probably take like what ten minute break. Uh, yeah. Let's give it a Maybe solid something like 15. That. Solid fifteen to urinate, get yeah. food. And well, whatever. I mean, the audience doesn't, doesn't know how long. We're yeah, exactly. Like it doesn't matter. So fuck yeah. yeah. So guys, this fuck this will tomorrow. be one. Yeah. Uh, and then next we'll talk about video games, yep. which uh, might get even longer. <laughs> yeah. I know mine won't get longer. Oh, and also, I it if it gets longer, I'm gonna fall asleep in this chair because I'm normally asleep. Like well, two and a half hours ago. Yeah, so, so we're gonna get up, move around a bit, and well, yeah, I'll be back. Yeah.